command national loyalty, thereby ensuring that there shall be no predominance of persons from a few states or from a few ethnic group, sectional group, in the government or in any of its agencies. Today, as I'm talking to you, the presidency of Nigeria has appointed 100 appointments, all 99% of these appointments to Fulanis, in contravention of this section 14, subsection 3 of 1999 constitution as amended. As I'm talking to you today, the three arms of government are controlled by Fulanis. In uh, infringement of this constitution, section 14, subsection 3 of 1999 constitution as amended. The president is a Fulani, Senate president is a Fulani, the CGN is a Fulani, the uh, chief judge of the federation is a Fulani, the attorney general of Nigeria is a Fulani, the, or all the, uh, the chief security agents, agents in Nigeria from DSS to, to, to EFCC to police to chief of army staff, all are Fulanese. In breach of section 14, subsection 3 of this 1999 constitution as amended. So how can you continue to be part of a sectional government who claim to have a constitution who claim to, to represent and have sworn an oath of allegiance to this said constitution and they are breaching it with impunity. Nobody in Nigeria today that has not witnessed how the appointment of the presidency has been going on since 2015. Some people say it is lopsided. Some people say a section of the country has been sidelined and in contravention of this constitution. So we cannot continue to be part of a government that is being led by incompetent leader. And as you can see, like I'm saying, there is no way Nigeria can move forward when a constitution of the country is not being respected. I will stop here and we continue again when my time comes. Thank you. Or Thank you so much. I believe you um, You touched a lot of points uh, in this Biafran struggle. I will just go straight quickly to um, to Uche, Uche, if you have anything you can say, you can just just chip in into what uh, Mr. Simon just uh, elaborated, please. Yes, um, according to what he pointed out in the, um, the video that was circulated some days ago, I want viewers to try to understand that that video is just for a section, a particular hospital or a particular maybe school or um, the kind of uh, maybe something like um, camp. Do you know how many of those camps we had during that war? That is just a session, a particular place. And I'm so sure that places existed like in more than 200 places in all states, all villages. And they are just showing that place where is on videos and people are just shouting oh there are a lot more of things we, we did not see that nobody saw and there were there was no video there was no pictures and they all have so it is very disheartening when you see such things happening in um that happened then and somebody will tell you oh why are you chatting about biafra biafra people no more nigeria nigeria has never worked it is not like nigeria is going to work again it has never worked for once Nigeria has never worked one day. You can't be saying, okay, Nigeria will be great again. It can work again. That is not possible. We've tried it. And Biafran saw it many years ago. We saw it. And they came to kill us. So that is in that side. So my main is um, I want to talk about what we Biafrans are going to gain in this struggle and also friends of Biafran. We have some good brothers and girls who we can possibly say they are not a Biafran terror. I bet you they are Biafrans. Like the, the, those the Yoruba brothers, we are all fighting for the same cause. Like we want Biafra and they are want to do our best. All we know is we just want this country to break. Now, 
Take for instance, if Beyonce and I bet you the route that people travel from desert to Europe and Libya, that route will cease to exist because most of the people that pass through that route are Biafrans and few Udos and a dose across the other side. You know, so you will be you will see that those kind of lifestyle will cease to exist. Understand? Like now we have maybe we have Biafran airline now. People will be traveling from maybe let's say for example our capital Enugu to New York. It will be a very cheap fare or maybe to London and all those places. Believe you me, I know quite well my friends that said if this happens, they are going to come from and fly a cheaper airline to Europe or America. They are not even seeing it that from that angle. Now we are going to open our seaports. Seaports are working. If you go to Lagos, they tell you to click on one million naira, and Bear France are clearing with two hundred thousand. Would you go to Bear France? And it will also force the Nigerians to bring their own uh, price down. Before you know it, the fact Bear France. Also affecting them positively. They don't even think about all that. You understand? So it's not all about people think we are we are not being we are not being selfish. There are a lot of things that you cannot enjoy in, and I'm so sure, hundred percent, you will enjoy it in Biafra. And we are good neighbors. If you need stamp, if um, that to cross to do your business. This and go there. We know who is coming in and who is going out. You can just pass it through our bushes, through our forests, and be killing us and be making our farmers not to work anymore. And it's also causing shortages in Biafra. That is what we are saying. We want people that want to reason like human beings because, as I'm telling you, Nigerians don't reason. Like I keep telling people. Oh, these leaders. If you are talking about the leaders, where were the leaders we have today, 20 years ago? They were not the leaders, and we were talking about the leaders. Now, they climbed up there and it's still the same thing. That should let you know that it is not all about the people, it's the system. Like someone said, it is fraudulent, it cannot work, it can't take Nigeria to anywhere. So, and I am imploring all Biafran friends and neighbors to support Biafran struggle. It's not because we face them out as okay, you know what? Is our no? It's going to affect everybody positively. We are all going to gain from it. At least if you are from a do state or you're from somewhere close by and you can't travel. At least if you become a Biafran and you have a Biafran passport, it, and I'm so sure most countries will accept us. You don't need to come and be strong. Oh, I have a grip. No, there are ways which is going to affect people around. Then, thirdly, people are saying, How are we going to create jobs? There are no jobs. It doesn't work that way. You need to see that. Like now, if Biafra starts today, we need people in the army, air force, police, custom. And uh, 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 people that work in the uh, government quarters, we, we are not people that work there. They are still bands, they are from youth. And, and I bet the number of youth we have today might not be even be enough for the kind of job that will be out on the first month of Biafran uh, realization. I, I'll tell you one more thing all countries will build the embassies, they get job embassies. Come to come. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Uche. Uh, so much appreciate the effort and then the time you guys put in to come to this show. Um, from my own point of view, actually, because I also like to chip in something because um, I will say, for me, the government actually failed. They failed us so woefully. Okay. Uh, so at the time we got independence in this moment, I'm sure we've made a lot of money. The, Nigeria is blessed with so much, there's so much resources in that country. But unfortunately, we have a few of them who actually think um, Nigeria is their own father's kind of property. And then they try to subjugate every one of us. 
okay so if actually we're able to um to harness what god has given to us in developing that nation i don't think majority of us will be out of the country you know trying to trying to get um trying to better our lives and trying to better the life of our loved ones back home okay it's actually a shame that me i'm in this place right now i'm trying to find my feet and um if anyone is against the struggle of um, freedom of people being um people fighting for their freedom trying to be free and then break the shackles of bondage if anyone is against that then i see that person as an enemy of progress okay because you cannot subjugate some area um some region in the country and then why the others are enjoying the benefit or the dividend coming from that country okay if they actually wanted um a one nigeria to be a prosperous one they should have they should have make it in such a way that everybody benefit from it okay look at what is going on now the covid 19 that that has hit the country what did they give to the southern uh, the southern region of the nation what did they give to them okay i've asked my people they didn't get anything they didn't get any food they didn't get any money so the money that our people donated who and who did they give it to who and who benefited from it because it, uh, we've seen videos where people are being given uh, bags of rice in the north they were giving money why the people from the southern region did not get actually nothing they were given like maybe uh, a cup of rice on the cup of beans and then gary which cannot even go a long way so the thing is uh the government actually what they do what they're doing to the people from the southern region is very very bad and it is unfair okay me i am always angry when i see things like that happening okay it cannot just subjugate the people that even have the money you know they are like living they are living so poorly like uh they are finding it difficult to feed whereas they have what it takes to be kings and queens in that nation but no we've got people who think they can actually sit on all of it and then control what comes from our own region it is saddening and it is heartbreaking okay the government actually for them to be uh for them to save life okay me i believe i believe in my heart deep down in my heart that they need to break up the, the country they need to break nigeria for everyone to have peace for everyone to live in uh, for everyone to have a good life for people to be safe and alive because the way they're handling the southern region because I, it will come a time when people are going to bounce back and when they do that it's going to be bloody and nobody's asking for war or nobody's asking for for uh, for arms but right now they are asking for peaceful dissolution of that country peaceful disintegration of nigeria they should do it peacefully let everyone go their separate ways and i believe even when we do that we'll also have this uh, common relationship the the north uh, the arewa republic and then the odudua republic breaking up the nation does not mean that they will still not gain anything from other regions no i don't believe that i believe they will but the thing is them trying to uh, put all of us in one umbrella under one umbrella and this not working no me i don't subscribe to that i don't okay um i'll have to go back to mr simon um so throw more light on um what our people actually are what is the plan for for biafra nation what what is uh, in the pipeline for the youth in biafra as well not just only the biafrans um because now we say we have the southern region okay and i believe in unity of the southern uh, the southern region of uh, in nigeria okay so at, for me i think it is high time we all stop the segregation and then fighting one another on social media is not going to it's, it's not going to help us in any way because what i see is the enemy actually they use that opportunity to come in and try to put the uh put the um you know try to still pull the gap you know try to widen the gap between us so now actually me i believe it's time for us to build bridges between the arewas i mean between the oduduas and then the biafrans so mr simon uh what i will need from you is actually to if there is anything you need to tell the the, the, the oduduans and then the biafrans you know if there is anything that can bring us together not like fight one cause or trying to fight um uh, odudua and biafra together no is there anything that actually you want to tell you want to tell our viewers you know the older ones and the bear friends because every now and then when i go online i see them fighting one another which doesn't really make any sense to me please over to you mm. yes thank you thank you very much uh jocelyn you see um one thing uh people don't understand is that uh, uh when we talk about biafra we are talking about a nation, a nation that has its citizens scattered all over the world. 
when we talk about Biafra, we are talking about a nation that has produced or that have, have one of the best scientists, one of the best doctors, one of the best in the world. Anything you can think of, any profession you can think of today, and you go to America, you go to United Kingdom, go to Europe, you see Biafrans doing wonders. So, the uh, Biafra I am looking at is a country that, first of all, uh, will be the beginning of civilization in Africa. The beginning of civilization in the sense that have just all the people I have just mentioned, like coming all over the world to help to build the best country on earth, to prove people wrong, to prove some people wrong. And I want to tell you, you know, sometimes Nigerians amaze me. Some of the Nigerians, they amaze me. When I hear some people say, look at all these uh, politicians, they travel abroad, they see how life is there abroad, they come to Nigeria, they cannot do anything. You see governors, you see ministers, you see president, you see vice president, you see government official, their families, their children are studying somewhere abroad. And they go there all the time, often, to see their families who are studying or who live somewhere in America or in the United Kingdom. They see the way things are working there, they see electricity, they see that electricity is the power to any country economy. Energy is the power to, to economy, to boost economy. Now they go back to Nigeria and nothing happened. And people continue to wonder, and people continue to make references to this kind of episode that, oh, why these people go abroad? They know everything there, they see good things there. When they come back to Nigeria, they don't want to do anything. I will tell you one thing. You see, it is because of the diversity of Nigeria. And the diversity of Nigeria has made it impossible for Nigeria to progress as a nation. The death of Nigeria has killed Nigeria. And that is why when we talk about Biafra, you have no such diversity of thinking, attitude. Your thinking, your progressive mind, you don't have that kind of diversity in Biafra, at least in the nation or ethnic group that made up Biafra. Everybody wants progress. But in Nigeria, you have a section of the Nigeria state that cannot embrace civilization. There is nothing you can do. They have lived for hundred and something years. For so many years, there is nothing like civilization. They have not embraced civilization. So when you, when you see all these uh, politicians coming to Europe, and they see electricity 24 hours. They go back to Nigeria. They want to implement that kind of system they see. The other side of Nigeria, which is the north, that have not embraced civilization, we never allow it to work. Now, in Biafra, we are going to have what we call a credit based system. Credit based system the credit based system is going to be the foundation of the economy and everything in biafra when you have a credit based system it means that everybody will be uh, uh everybody have we have what we call data this credit based system will give data system to biafra first of all the same credit system will make Biafrans to have what we call the central insurance system. We, it can be called, I'm just giving you example what Biafra, what Biafra is going to be like. You, it can be called anything. It can be named anything. But the credit-based system is a will be a combination of what Biafrans all over the world 
professionals all over the world have learned in their different countries. And Biafra will be open for people of different professionals to come and put in what they have learned from different and various parts of the world. Unlike Nigeria, unlike Nigeria system, whereby if you bring anybody from diaspora to come and make change and effect change in Nigeria, when the, pers when the person goes to Nigeria, the system of Nigeria will corrupt the person, kill his career, and rubbish the integrity of that person. And that is why you see that anybody that goes from abroad, from diaspora to Nigeria, and take any appointment, that is the end of the integrity, that is the end of his expertise, that is the end of that person. I will give example, I'm not going to pass, I'm not going to pass government. I'm not going to the government of the past. And I will start from the present government to tell you the example of the people that this government has rubbish their integrity. One of them is the Minister of Health. The Minister of Health came from Germany. According to them, highly recommended, highly recommended. We, as a, as a doctor or whatever he, he was, doing, whatever he was doing in Germany, he came to Nigeria with high hope. He is coming to change Nigeria. The day he was sworn in, or the day he went to the Senate to go and have their uh, bow and go, or whatever they call it, he was promising Nigeria, he was telling Nigerians how he have experience, how his experience is going to be vested on the health sector, on the health sector of Nigeria, and how he's going to turn everything uh, overnight in Nigeria, if, if accepted and confirmed as Minister of Health. Today, we have seen it. He could not differentiate between technicians and doctors from China. He paraded ordinary technicians, ordinary technicians who came from China to install ventilators. He paraded them as doctors. And at the end of the day, he could not differentiate. So the Nigeria system has killed him, completely killed his career. The same thing is to Onyama. Onyama, the minister of is it a foreign affairs minister also. They, he's the one they are using. When they went to America to to get uh, the to sign the repatriation of the Abacha loot, he was the one meeting with the Secretary of State. They have rubbish him every place he goes. The every place they do any kind of uh, he is the crisis manager. Now Nigeria, for example, is evacuating its citizens. It, it just underline the word evacuating evacuation of citizens now how can you call it evacuation of citizens when the citizens are the one paying for the tickets they are the citizens of nigeria the people you see you saw that came back from dubai from the united arab emirates they paid for their flight so you cannot and they come publicly to say the government evacuated nigerians the government did not evacuate nigerians and as he, Onyama, who is well-learned, well-educated, should have known as the Minister of Foreign Affairs that you cannot tell the world that the government evacuated the citizens of Nigeria because those citizens paid part of the ticket or they are returned to Nigeria. So it cannot be evacuation. But they have deceived the world. They deceived Nigerians that Nigerians are evacuating their citizens in Dubai. That is a lie. And that is what working for Nigeria can do for you. So what I'm trying to say is this. Biafra will adopt, first of all, the credit-based system, which will now be a base for a new country, for the best country in Africa. The credit-based economy will be the one that if somebody commits crime, you know exactly who the person is. There's going to be a fingerprinting system, not like this Nigeria you see now, that uh, when somebody, when Fulani come and enter your forest and kill somebody, uh, nobody will hold them accountable. One thing you are going to gain from Biafra is that no Fulani will be in Biafra forest. For you to enter Biafra land, you must have your residence permit. You must cross the border legally. Our border will be very pro well protected. We will pump money into our military. We will because that any country that do not have uh, uh, do not have a security system, that is the end of that country, just like Nigeria don't have. Nigeria's security system has been compromised. And in Biafra, 
you will have a security system that can never ever be compromised that is the difference so when you look at most of the country of in the europe all these countries you see in the europe they have common interest common interest and that common interest bind them together that you can never see compromise you can never see them compromising their own security system or like nigeria so there are a lot of things we we, we, we are looking up to in biafra land biafra can never be like nigeria it cannot be compared it can never ever be compared and believe me the day biafra will have uh, independence you will see the mass return of biafrans all over the world some people will even volunteer to work for biafra for free somebody like me i don't need to take money from biafra to be able to be part of biafra so a lot of people will come and participate in brainstorming for Biafra uh, country, for the Republic of Biafra, for the best country in Africa and in the world. Within 10 years, the world will be amazed. Let me stop here. Within 10 years of Biafra. Thank, thank you, you so much. Um... All right. Um, thank you so much, uh, Simon. That was a great one. I don't know if they can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, Uche, I'll, I'll go back to you. Um, actually, what, Fra uh, what um, Simon said is actually amazing, no? So I, I know we've got people um, who are willing and then ready at any time to come back home and develop Biafra Nation, okay? And um, me, I'm actually one of them because uh, it's a country where I will want to live in one day and then, uh, you know, train my children in Biafra land because we've got actually the resources. We've, we've got what it takes to, to build a great nation. And uh, I'm the kind of a person who do not believe in corruption of any kind, okay? So whatever resources that will be coming out of Biafran land, we have to be properly utilized. And then we all have to give accountable of whatever we're going to do in Biafra. Because like Mazenam de Kano Right Flu said one time, and I quote him, he said, I will not suffer and then get Biafra and allow us to behave like Nigerians. And he's going to use a chemical weapon on all of us. So, and it will be a thing of a, uh, it will be a shameful thing that after this whole struggle, you know, sleepless night, um, you know, bloods are being shed. You know, at the end of it, then we come back home and mess up the country that we all struggled and fought for. Okay, so um, Uche, I will actually like you to uh, to go back on. Um, so the plans we have regarding Biafra, okay? Because if you go to the state of, if you go to Abia State to be precise, that place is is an eyesore. It's not is not something to write home about, okay? And actually, I'm ashamed when I when I go there and then I see how people are living, and uh, people are living in a poor health condition. There is no good uh, no power supply. There is no good basic amenities for people to actually have access to, you understand? So the thing is, uh, because our people actually, um, we can easily sell ideas to people. You know, it's easy to brainwash people, it's easy to sell ideas to people and they believe you. But the thing is, uh, is it going to be business as usual? Promise, promise and promise and then nothing to show for it. Over to you, um, Uche. Hello. I'm not sure if we can hear Hi. Uche's voice, so you can continue for now while we try to resolve Uche's voice. Yeah, you can give it to Simon to continue, okay. and I will try to resolve Uche's voice. All right, great. Um, um, Simon, while we wait for Uche, because I couldn't hear him from the from the back end. Um, Simon, actually, I don't know if you heard what I said because I was actually throwing the question to Uche regarding the plans we we have because I mentioned about the state of Abia's um, the pathetic nature of Abia state right now, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. What is going on? The, the, the people the, the people are not being taken care of, to be precise, mm -hmm. because uh, especially if, when, you go, when you travel down the road to Southeast, when you travel down road Southeast, 
if you travel by road you see how terrible the state is especially the road mm. our roads are very poor and every now and then we keep hearing um a, um a contract has been given to a company to work on the road it's like a, a year a year in year out thing and there is nothing to show for it so what i was asking uche is it's easy for us to sell idea to people you know promises promises and promises uh, is it going to be business as usual because nigerians we are known to promise um i would say for now we are <laughs> to promise and promise and nothing to show for it so in biafra in biafra is it going to be business as usual promise and nothing to show for it well thank you thank you very much uh, jocelyn uh, first of all, I would want to correct something here. You see? Okay, go ahead. Everybody, everybody in Nigeria today, everybody, everyone, including the Fulanese in Nigeria today, knows that Igbos are game changers, know that Biafrans are game changers. Hmm. And that is the reason why some people, including most of the prominent men in Nigeria today, they say, if you give a president to an Igbo man or to a Biafran, Nigeria will change. That is not just a, that is not just a political talk. You see, it is even as Nigeria is now. We know that an Igbo presidency cannot do anything in Nigeria because Nigeria is rotten. You understand? But I will take you to the past. You see. People are making references to Biafrans. People are making references, people from other ethnic groups, from Yorubas, Ududuwas, from Edo, from the North. They are making references to what the Biafrans can do if the opportunity is given to them. That was then, not now, because Nigeria has become irredeemable. Okay. So, Igbo, Igbo person, like you just mentioned Abia, so I, I'm going to use Abia and as Igbo, as Igbo state. Igbo people are known for their positive mind. Igbo people don't want to suffer. Igbo people want a good environment. Igbo people want progress. And that is the reason why when someone, when someone was analyzing the power of Igbo entrepreneurship, that the Igbo entrepreneurship has produced billionaires, more billionaires than any university, even any university in the world. And that is the fact. The Igbo system of entrepreneurship, or this Igbo, Igbo, the way Igbo, Igbo system of business. Now, that will tell you a lot why Abia State is the way it is today, is because Abia State is under Nigeria. And nothing will ever work under Nigeria. Under Nigeria, as that Abia state is, you will give contracts to somebody and the contract cannot come from governor directly. Governor has somebody whom he, whom he called godfather from the north. The person that installed the governor of Abia state, as we know today, the Todora Oji, Todora Oji, that was a leak of a letter of oaths taken in a shrine in India. That is what happens in under Nigeria because Nigeria is a cost nation and nothing works under Nigeria. So when, you, when the allocation comes to the state, you have already somebody somewhere waiting for the share of that allocation that comes to that state. I have given example of this before. If you get, for example, one billion as an allocation in Abia State. And inside that one billion, you have somebody from the Fulanese who already have 10% share of that one billion. After you share the one billion, you give 10% to the person. You have somebody who was the ex governor of the state who handed over to you on contract. After handing over to you on contract, the person have 20%. And remember that the 20% is not on direct transfer. It is going to come on contract. It is going to come as a contract. 
Now the issue of Todora Oji, Todora Oji have so many companies who are in, in, in a road and road construction and construction and all that. So when that money comes, what they do is to share the money and give that contract to these companies that are owned by the former governors. Once the money is shared among them, that will be the end of that building of the road and infrastructure in that state. In Biafra land, that cannot happen. But in Nigeria, it will happen. And if Abia people try to revolt against the governor, listen very clear, because this, this one I'm about to say now is very important. When Abia people want to revolt against the governor, then the Fulanese who are in the security agency will send their battalion from Abuja against the citizens who will come out in their numbers to protest against the governor for embezzling money in the state. You see why it cannot work? And when those people, when those policemen come, they will start shooting with AK-47 for protesting. That is why you cannot see any protest in Nigeria now. They will be killing people extrajudiciously because Fulanese are giving order to do that against the constitution of Nigeria. So in Nigeria, it is possible, but in Biafra, anybody, any money released to the state will be accounted for. That is the beginning of civilization. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. For, um, thank you, Simon. Okay. Uh, Uche, can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, sorry, we got we you were cut off because we couldn't hear you from from behind, from the back end. Uh, I don't know if you heard what um, what Simon was saying all along. I don't know if you were able to hear him. Okay, um, because we have mentioned about the Abia State. Um, because basically, this program um, actually is just for you know to talk about more of Biafrans and what we what we Biafrans are going to get okay this struggle is not just for few it's, it should be for everyone because I believe not all of us were actually into this when the Biafran struggle started even me myself I was not I was not into it because I was uh, I'm the person that believed in one Nigeria then okay so now we've gotten the spirit of Biafra is actually in uh, majority of us and everyone, so many of us are working behind the scene to make sure we, we actualize Biafra and to make sure lives are no longer lost because we don't want to lose lives anymore because uh, the people we are fighting for, they need to be alive to, to see Biafra. Okay. And um, now I would actually like to talk about on our leaders from the Biafrans, from the Biafran nation. Okay. Because I see not all of them are actually into. I wouldn't say not all of them because I see they are not saying anything about it. Okay. And um seems that there is something behind that uh, actually there's something we they are not telling us. Is it that they are actually trying to strangulate the struggle because of what they are getting from their their or they are just being quiet or they don't want to come they don't want to confront the issue heads on? What is your take on that? Okay, at this point, let me let me put uh, Simon. Simon says he always say they have Biafra at heart. That's what uh, Simon always says. These people yeah. you are seeing, they all have Biafra in their heart, and that is true. Now, what actually happened is that um, let me tell you, the Biafra war is still on. Don't be deceived. It hasn't ended. The Biafra war is still on. In their mind, these people have been defeated. Let me, let me just digress a little bit. You said you want these people to come back to the nation. You don't want them to go. And when you came to their territory and their region, you were killing them. You, I want you, you and I, you and I, we were married, for example, and uh, all of a sudden we got, I would say you want to divorce. You say you don't want to be in this marriage anymore. Then I now come to your house. Instead of pleading, please, just leave. Come back, let this marriage work. Then I start beating you every day. I come, I stab you, kill you. How how does it look like? So what I'm trying to say is, we are kind of defeated all this why, and it, the war is still on. Don't get it twisted. This war is still on, but in a different form. Now you see leaders, all these ones like like someone just explained. Now this one will be there put his brother or his trusted friend and all that. 
that is what we suffered because these people were not elected nobody elected them they know how they rigged their way into that place and it was it is always what fathers that put them there so that they will protect their interests don't so that they won't probe them in the past government and also bring returns to them as the allocation comes from abuja you understand it so if you're expecting the people we have in Biafra and are the, are the leaders not to talk against Biafra or to support Biafra, it is not, they will not. These are not the kind of people that will make things in Biafra work. They will not. They will never. Okay, like for example, now, did you see what happened in Yoruba land or Motiko? The Igbo leaders or Biafra leaders cannot even wake up and do their own uh, their security outfits. See, the idea of police flew in from Abuja to now say, hey, we want to organize and control your uh, uh, security. And because they were scared that we are going to our own vigilante group. And I bet you they are so scared that it will now, it might now metamorphose into a uh, Biafran uh, struggle or break away. That they always had that fear. So if you, if you're talking about our leaders to be able to Biafran leaders to be able to come and support Biafra, it would not, it's not possible. Why I, I like a, the person like, uh, um, uh, Wiki, Governor, uh, Wiki. We, if we have such people in Biafra land, called Biafran land, there's going to be a problem. So that is aside. Then you also talk about, um, if the Biafran nation would be business as usual in this, like Nigeria, it's not possible. Every Biafra, it's a hardcore, hardworking human being or personality. Anywhere we find ourselves, be it in Europe, be even like now that I'm in America, I know what I've achieved. And here is not my country, with this that I'm being here. So, if Biafra comes, let me tell you, for example, what will happen. If, like, for example, now you have this thing in your car, maybe you just finished drinking water. Uh, Maybe such as water and throw it away from your car on the street. A Biafran will pick up the such as water waste, throw it into your car, and the total beating. That is the kind of Biafra we are going to have. Trust me. If you urinate somewhere on the street, a group of boys will meet you and beat you. They will ask you, Do you want, do you think here is Nigeria? That question will always come up. You think you are in Nigeria? Oh, you think you, you think you want you think you want to be a mess this area that will always be in the mind of Nigerian youths. Trust me. And you will see competition, you will see people that are hard working. People will volunteer to come out and work on the streets to be building roads. They will tell you, don't pay me. Simon said 10 years. Let me tell you, give Biaf for three years. You will not believe it. Give Biaf for three years, you will think you are Europe. 10 years is too much. What do we need? Good road. Light. Healthcare system. What are you saying? Like uh, our leader said, Nam the that we are all primary schools and secondary schools will be like a fast hotel. And I believe that. that. So, talking about how Abia State is, how Abia State cannot work. It's Nigeria. We are still in Nigeria until Biafra is pronounced. And at you, you will be surprised. So, if you think we're still gonna be like a normal thing, you will not receive bribe. There's no room for such. If you not, and let me let me tell you, people think it's all about oil. My brother, forget it's not about oil. Tax. Let me tell you, tax alone. Do you think they will tell you they budgeted uh, two hundred? These are scam. I bet you most of the contracts and budget they give out in Nigeria, if it's hundred percent, I tell you. Twenty percent of their putting can do those jobs decently, but they cannot. They will pad it, pad it, and pad it. So that's why you think to run governance is going to be so expensive. It is not big because there's going to be accountability. If you go to the um, IRS or whatever they call it, where they pay tax, you will slot your card and pay your tax, and it, you will see that on the screen. So nobody is going to tell you go and send your tax, then they will harmonize it and come and tell you no. You can walk into the office and ask how much do we have? you will you will press calculator there or whatever button you will see the balance. We are paying so workers or so uh, contractor this one that one some amount of money. 
on it, you will see having the balance. It's not going to be a business as usual like Nigeria. It is not possible. It is not possible. It is going to be a nation that will mark the beginning of civilization in Africa. They will develop Africa, not just Biafra land or Nigeria. And I tr trust, I trust me, you will see me, our maybe middle bed brothers, and even the northerners that will tell you we want to be their friends. And they will come once you have the idea. But our agenda, we have a purpose. Like in Israel, they are Israelites. You can come, but they will tell you the guidelines and the rules. If you cannot follow it, they will take you out. You can't come and bring in your own system to run, overrun our own. No, we have our own system. When you come in, this is how you work. So we are not going to say, okay, it's only the, no, it's not only Biafans. If I mean, you do the war, I know we're going to have a lot of idols in Biafran land living and flourishing. Trust me, a lot of them. Because our currency is going to be so high. It's not going to be like, because we're not going to be doing all this import. We do things. We have a bar, we have on the chair, we have everywhere. We'll be producing. So we're not going to be like, we're not going to buy cars in Biafra lands. We're not buying cars. Trust me. So that's, that will be all for now. Uh, this is very awesome, actually. The, <laughs> it's getting so interesting in here. And um, um, I, I would like to get back to, I don't know if you'd like to take some calls or not yet. So if you are in for calls, maybe um, Mr. Ade can put up the, the 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 line for those that will want to call in. Okay. So um, for me, I see a beer from whereby everybody will have equal share of everything. I see a beer from where there will be equality. The 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 youth will be will be completely and totally engaged. I see a beer from whereby there will not be no room for laziness. Except you actually want to be, uh, you actually want to remain as a criminal or you want to be a criminal by choice because uh, I see Biafra whereby we have what it takes to get people fully employed and busy a Biafra whereby when you see things that does not belong to you um, you will not be tempted to take I see a Biafra whereby um, the road will be beautiful I see a Biafra where there will be no slums because this is my dream country because i don't want a, a nation whereby when i travel to some places i still see slums around this is not a biafra me i i'm in, i mean visualizing it's not the kind of biafra me i want to live in me i want a state or a nation whereby when i when i go out i can leave my door open everything is safe and secure okay and then i uh, also want a biafra whereby when you commit a crime you will still go in for it it's not it's not going to be when you commit a crime you will not pay for your crime no it's not going to be like that so um simon please um yes. now we're talking about we have to talk about the food production because people are saying most people they believe that when when they're talking about breakup of nigeria they feel that uh, since the northerners are good in uh, food production they feel that other states will not be able to get enough food to go in circulation do you think that will be the the case when we get biafra what do you think about the food production aspect of it uh thank you very much uh, jocelyn first of all it is only those who are ignorant of the uh, the reality of in uh, the reality in nigeria that will say that uh, northerners are good in food uh, production northerners are not good in food production compared to biafrans and uh, when I listened to the governor of uh, the former governor of Imo State, uh, Rogers of Koracha, explaining how he wanted to make an exchange of Biafrans, of uh, scientists to go to Jigawa State, uh, in, and then the Jigawa State governor will bring some people from Jigawa to come and teach uh, Biafrans in Biafra land how to farm. That was a very great uh, insult uh, coming from a governor who should be able to know better than the people he is ruling. So he was ruling. So it was a very uh, disappointing statement coming from Okorocha. It means that most of the leaders in Biafra land do not have touch. They are not in touch with the reality. How can a I think I have a call be? on the line. Okay. I think I have a call on the line. Maybe we should take the call. Okay. Hello, caller. 
My my name. Hello, tell us your name and where you're calling from, please. Hello. Okay. Could you please calm down the volume? Hello. Go ahead, sir. Hello. Hello, me. Is it me? Yes. 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 Okay. Hello. Good evening, Brother Simon. I I want to ask you this question. You know, uh, if you people have Wi-Fi Republic, you know Nigerian have corrupt or corrupt a lot of people. So everybody in Nigeria, we are all corrupt. Let, let, let's not lie about that. What are the debts? What are the penalty are you going to give if anybody commits any corrupt case in Wi-Fi Republic? What are the debt? Is it death penalty or is it a jail sentence? What kind of sentence do you people propose for corrupt people? Because corruption is the problem of Nigeria. Since we are having a, a private republic, we should have a plan for corrupt leaders in private republic. What are the what are the penalty for, for corruption? That's my question. Thank you. Uh, can I can I answer him? Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> Yes. Thank, you very, thank, you very, thank you very much. Uh, you see, this is a very, this is a very important, a very important question. But uh, first of all, I will explain something that will address this question first, and then I will come to the answer. Now, when we talk about corruption, when we talk about corruption in Nigeria, corruption have been institutionalized by the politicians. Now, the difference we are going to make in Biafra is that we are going to put a, a system in place that will, first of all, prevent, prevent corruption. Now, after the, after the system that will prevent corruption, of course, we are not saying that uh, totally there, there's going to be, uh, uh, Biafra is going to be rid of corruption and or anybody that says anything like that is not being sincere. But the point is that we are going to put a system in place that will prevent corruption to its minimum. And what are the system? What are the system? The system is what I started I stated in the beginning. It is called the credit based system, which means everybody, everything you do is database in Biafra. Now, the second thing that is going to address the issue of corruption in Nigeria is the constitution of Biafra. A country without a functional constitution like Nigeria, there is nothing you can do to fight corruption. So first of all, we will have, we will strengthen the constitution of Biafra. The constitution of Biafra will be the spirit. Once that is done, the Biafra police will be the one to enforce the constitution of the federal uh, of the Republic of Biafra. Once there is a functional constitution of Biafra, you have solved at least the biggest percentage of corruption. That is number <clears throat> two. Number three, nobody will come here now to say that this is going to be a penalty of, uh, of somebody who commits crime in Biafra, and this is going to be the sentence, whether we are going to adopt that, that, uh, that sentence uh, or not. Of course, we are looking at civilization. And when we adopt this civilization, people, other countries are abolishing the death penalty for crimes. And we, we do not expect Biafra to come and start adopting the death penalty, you know, of like I said, we cannot begin now to say this is going to be the uh, de the penalty for somebody committing this crime or that crime. Whatever we say now is just our opinion. But believing and hoping that people who are championing the cause of Biafra are professionals scattered all over the world, it is going to come. The constitution of Biafra is going to be the best. It is going okay, to be a quick a one. Fast. Sorry. A quick one. Um, in case in, in please, I would I would suggest you turn down the volume from your own end so that it doesn't echo in the background. I think I have another call on the line or something. Yeah, there is no, one I call on the line. Volume. I don't have volume here. 
No, it's not you, Frank. Uh, it's not you, Simon. Those calling in from outside, they need to turn down the volume on the, on their own screen. Okay. So I, I, I want to let you quickly answer this call at first because it's very it's a very important question. I also like to because touch on that people, issue, Simon. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I also like to touch on that issue when you're done explaining. Okay. I will touch so on now, that. Uh, so now, yes. Yeah, so now the issue of whether we are going to adopt death, death penalty in Biafra or not going to adopt death penalty in Biafra is secondary. You see, death penalty doesn't solve crime. That is one thing. Death penalty doesn't solve crime. If you check the countries where you have death penalty, you have the highest rate of crime in those countries. I want to use Europe, for example. For example, in Finland. In Finland, you do not have death penalty in Finland. It has been abolished. And the, the crime rate in Finland is very low. In fact, in one year, you may not even see a police in Finland shooting a gun. So that is example. So the death penalty doesn't work. And in Africa, in Africa, believe me, we will be doing something different in Biafra, in Biafra Republic. We want to experiment, not just experiment, but make sure we come together, bring the best brain all over the world that will come back from all over the world and put the best constitution that you can have on earth. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Uche, no. you said you wanted to chip in something. Yeah. Uh, oh, what I want to say is this. You know, when we just moved from Nigeria to Biafra, you know, we just newly moved. Don't get it wrong. We're still going to have those elements for the first few years we moved in because we are coming from the mentality of Nigeria to this Biafra. Now, why do you think we have prisons? Big prisons because there are, we know America separates criminals from the society to isolate them for them to start their punishment to to pay from corrupting other citizens. <laughs> then you start your punishment. So we will build good prisons. So by the time by the time you commit crime, whoever you are, you are going you, are, you go outside your, outside your sentence, even if you are governor or your minister. Now, thirdly, secondly, the system will not allow corruption. The system is not going to allow corruption. Just like that, everything will be database recorded. Thirdly, you cannot run a public office. There's no salary. The salary is going to be very minimal. If you are if you are in government, if you are government worker in government positions, they're not going to they, they they will even pay a teacher and a police higher than once you are a minister or governor or or your they are going to pay them. So if you know you're not going to stop, don't go. And I bet you people will know people will be scared to go around for office. Then that is when you now see the people that has that to rule will come out. Okay, do you know what? Let me run, let me go and serve. Police will be highly paid, soldiers will be highly paid. Um, teachers, nurse, doctors, you will pay them higher than senators. If you are not going to take 100,000 naira as a senator, go home. Let me just use naira for example. If you are not going to take 50,000 naira for salary as a senator, house of rep member, then don't come. It's going to be in law so that when you go there, you speak the truth. So you're not going to be looking at money and you'll be stuck trying to pass some public bills. That will, there will not be, there will be no chance. No chance. All right. Thank you so much. I believe I have another caller on the line. Um, caller, could you please tell us where you're calling from and your name, please? Uh, can I go on, sir? Yes, please, we can hear you. Okay. Hello, um, my name is uh, Oko Yozo from UK, Leicester, UK. Are you online? Uh, are you still speaking? Us, can I go, go on? Yes, please. My question is that... Um, as uh, every uh, to, uh, um, as what they are saying yeah, is right, and uh, what they are saying is okay to hear, is because they're telling us what we want to hear. My question to them is that, as they are having this program now, or anytime they want to have program in heritage saying uh, why can't they invite those top uh, their friends that are claiming that they are some like they do some part of they do or middle belt or um niger delta that um biafrans to come and join and have a this because this program this fight we are fighting as a biafra is a fight between all of us so i'm 
I'm hoping I'm looking to see from so, so, uh, see uh, one of those our brothers that join in this kind of conversation because that will help us to make more things easier for us for people to understand where they are coming from. Because if you can if you don't have a conversation with somebody, if you don't know anyone, anybody can you don't know what he or she wants to as they are claiming and what they are saying and what people are saying outside about Niger Delta, Middle Belt. They do side as Biafra, claiming that they are Biafra. Why sir, there are some of them are saying that they are not Biafra? I think this this platform is opportunity to solve, to solve that problem, to settle the score that's going on because we need peace. If we don't have peace within ourselves, all this we will have a saboteur. So I'm, I'm directing Simon this question to Simon: What is his plan? And those that are coordinating Biafra, making Biafra to come to unite all Biafrans and all the people that, all the city-states that belongs to Biafra to come together as one to fight this war fight that we're fighting. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much for that question. Simon, let me take this answer for you quickly to make it easy. Okay. Number one, the, the program is new. Last week, we have both Biafrans and Yoruba online. And we find out that the best way forward is to bring Yoruba, Biafran, Delta, everybody in the South, bring everybody together. That is why we have this program every Thursday now that this 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 young lady is champion, championing. On 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 on, on Thursdays we're gonna have Biafran. On Friday we're gonna have Biafrans, Yoruba, Delta. Everybody will now come together because we don't want to bring everybody together on Thursday. We want the Biafrans okay. to be able to hire on out their own problem that day because it, okay. it's not it's not about Yoruba. It's not about Biafran. It's not about Delta. It's about human being. We want to be free. We don't want anybody to to, to enslave us anymore. I hope that satisfies mm -hmm. you. Simon, quickly, do you have anything to add to that one? Or you are okay no, with I that think, one? I think, you have, I, I think you have answered him, you know, very well. You know, this is my second time on this program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. We're going to go to the next caller, sir. Because Thank caller, you. make it very quick. Thank you very, very much, Daddy. I'm going to go to the next caller. Make it very quick and make the answer brief as well so that it will be easy for more people. I have about 58 missed calls already. Caller, go ahead, please. Straight to your question. Hello, please. I'd like to contribute. Hello, tell us where you're calling uh, from and your name, please. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Matt. I'm calling from London. Okay. Um, I'm on to the panel. Yes, please go ahead. Um, is this the, uh, the program with, uh, with the Biafran, um, people? Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, uh, good evening. Um, and I want to say a big thank you to the panelists, especially to Jocelyn. Um, there's been a lot of comments. You're doing a great job. And I just want to thank, thank, uh, you. thank everybody for coming on board tonight to discuss this very, um, important issue. In art, um, I am in support of Biafra, but I'm not. I'm not Igbo. I'm Yoruba, and I'm totally in support of Uh I first want to say that uh, we're better off working together um, to kind of face this big enemy. And once we we are able to work together to defeat them, we can now decide the kind of relationship we want to have going forward. Having said that, I just want to quickly say that um, people should not be afraid of what, what would happen um, when uh, we have Biafra and when we have Utuwa because of the spillover of the evil and the corruption that is um, prevalent in Nigeria now. The truth is that technology will handle a lot of these problems. For example, I live in the UK. You have cameras everywhere. I tell you, if they switch up the camera for 30 minutes, people will leave this country to that track. But you dare not try it because you know there's something watching you. And somebody will come and knock your door and just pick you up. So when they know your address, they have your data, they can see your face. Uncle, I'm going to cut you short there because there's so many people waiting. So. Everybody get about 30, 30 seconds or 40 seconds, yeah? Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give it to them to answer in the studio. Go ahead, studio, yeah? Uh, yes, yeah, someone, go ahead. Uh, 
that sorry me yes <laughs> respond okay. to that <laughs> all right thank you yes thank you very much that's actually yes that's actually what i meant by credit but biafra is going to be credit based system because the caller just explained something about camera it is credit based system and that is why the police can come to your door to knock just by seeing your plate number or the plate number of the car that is over speeding that is credit based system so these are the kind of things we are looking up to to adopt in biafra land so when you that you know there is no over speeding there will be no over speeding once you have a credit system not only that it will solve the issue of corruption but the issue of a debt but you know caused by accident in africa most of the, in nigeria for example in biafra land you are go, we are going to reduce those debts uh, caused by accidents to the me, to the minimum and it will come from the credit based system thank you okay um i don't think i have any other call on the line yeah yeah, we're gonna take the next one now. Okay, is there any other call on the line? Yeah, go ahead, please. Na your name, where you're calling please. from. Hello, David, I am coming from Istanbul, Turkey. Okay, go ahead, sir. So, yeah, my take on I think the following is good, Mr. Uchi and uh, Mr. Simon, you are doing a very fantastic job, and uh, our very, very full lady in, uh, in moderating. So please, my question, my own take is, we, many of me have heard a lot about uh, Biafra and our education of everything. What I want to say is this, many of us are tired of talking, 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 because a freedom is not given, it is being taken. Sovereignty is not given, sovereignty stays, is being taken by those who needed sovereignty. Well, my question is, what plan is ahead in case of eventuality, if those are if those are a thing of referendum did not take place, what next plan are we having on the whole Biafra? Thank you very much. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you go. Thank you, Simon. Can I take yes. this one quickly? Yes, well? thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. uh, thank, thank you very much. Actually, uh, I don't think we will trust a, a referendum. I don't I don't think that we will trust referendum as it is now. Uh the, the person that just spoke now talked about that we are talking we are talking that uh, freedom is not given freedom is taken yes but this is the strategy we want to use to make sure that you that you understand the the importance of living nigeria your brother from the same mother from the same father didn't ha didn't share may not be sharing the same opinion with you that is the point because nigeria nigeria is a very complex and a very diversified country and this diversity have affected the brain of every nigerian coupled with the corruption and the rottenness in the nigeria system so your brother may share a totally different opinion and different view about nigeria uh, breakup about biafra and that is the reason why we have to adopt the, the this pattern and system of shouting and preaching so that you will be able to understand and your brother, who didn't believe now, will be able to understand why we need Biafra first. After everybody, and of course we cannot convince everybody, but after the majority of Biafrans have come to term that Nigeria is not working again, that we must leave Nigeria, then we will adopt the second uh, uh, approach. Now, and I want to tell you, we anybody that says we need the referendum, yes, if they bring referendum, we will accept it. But I want to tell you, Nigeria will break up just like the uh, the uh, Soviet Union. There will no referendum in Soviet Union. Nigeria will break up just like Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia did not do referendum. The referendum failed in 1945, and after the failing of the referendum in 1945, they break up in 1992. So it is not most that will adopt referendum. Referendum doesn't work in Nigeria. It will not work in Nigeria when the people that adopted referendum in 1945 that has the same situation with Nigeria now, we are Yugos Yugoslavia. It didn't work for them. So we may not trust referendum. There are other ways to break up Nigeria. You must not have referendum to break up Nigeria. If the South-South, like the Biafra land, and the Oduduwa come together 
and part of the middle belt come together and say we are not interested in Nigeria again. That is the end. You don't need a referendum to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. I uh, believe um, you, there is another call on the line. Um, just like Mazen Amdekanu said, there was time he said that people are asking him, when do we go to war? When do you go to war? When he's not actually, he doesn't want to waste any life and he doesn't want to, sh um, he doesn't want people to lose their life in the course of getting Biafra. Okay. He's actually a smart person and he's a very intelligent person. Despite the fact that people, most people don't like him because of the way he talks, the way he screams, and then, uh, you know, the way he throws, uh, maybe uh, the feel that he insults people. I actually understand why he talks in that direction or in that manner because he needs to get people sensitized because nigerians are not i uh, mean our people are not the kind of people you you know you massage their egos or you try yes. to massage to get to get information across to them the way he's doing it is the right way because if he doesn't scream i will not be here me i will not be here as well okay so um he is not towing the line of war he is not he wants everything to be done peacefully and then i think he's doing it the right way i have another call on the line let's take this one Hello, caller. Where are you calling from and your name, please? Yes, hi. Good evening, guys. My name is Frank Bello. Mm -hmm. I'm calling from Lock. Jocelyn, good evening. Simon, <laughs> hi, good evening to you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I have, you. Have, I have one question for you. The question is You have more in Biafra, old as in M O U L D in Biafra. Simon, how do you choose those mold in your land? Over to you. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The line was so bad. Um, he said... Hello, can you hear me? He's talking about yes. modes. You know, you know in, they said in every 12, there is always a Judas. In every 12. So he's talking about the modes we have in Biafra. How do we deal with this mode, these people? Like, we call them a flefus or the saboteurs, you know? Those ones within us, how do we get... Mm. How do we can, uh, I, can, I, can I answer yes. this? Okay, yes, okay. please, Uche, you can go ahead. Um, I want people to understand one thing. Not, you don't expect all Biafrans or all Igbo to say 100% yes, we agree on Biafra. Even the Israelites, not all of them agreed to it. They, some of them wanted to remain there and be suffering. So you don't just expect everybody to say, Oh, yes, we all live in Nigeria. No, I have friends. Even cousins say, no, ah, I don't want to. I like Nigeria. Nigeria is sweet. This one, that one. They don't understand. Everybody must not have the same understanding. So we should understand that. Even we, Biafrans, we've been shouting this thing for 40 years. Some people are just realizing now. Some people will see their lives tomorrow. Some people will see mm. come to terms next week. You don't just wake up and mm. see that, okay, good. Um, we, we will all say, okay, we are living. No, some will reject, but I tell you, we have over 80% of them to live there. They want to live in Nigeria. Mm. Thank you very much. Yeah, let me okay. keep it too. You see, the people that you call more today in Biafra, the people that we call most today in Biafra will be those who will be more proud of Biafra at the end of the day. Exactly. Because by the time you get Biafra, there is no other option of going to dine with Nigeria people. So they will become proud. They will even be more <laughs> proud than us. That I can, I can assure you. Because by then, there is no going back. And they will be more proud than Biafra, than any other person. But what I want to uh, what I want to chip in is, is uh, if, for example, the question uh, was, uh, what are we going to do to corrupt people coming to Biafra? For example, what are we going to do to the corrupt Nigeria? Like somebody asked that question, I didn't remember to address it. What are we going to do to the corrupt people in Nigeria that is now coming to Biafra? Automatically, there is no room. Your blood, in fact, you, the corruption in your blood will be boiling and boiling and be killing you silently because we will not give you any room. The system will not give you any room for corruption. Uh -huh. That's just the fact. We know how to fight corruption, not this thing they are doing in Nigeria. We, Biafrans, living, uh, living in diaspora, we know exactly how to fight corruption. It is not by fighting. You institute a system that will stop corruption. That will frustrate it, yeah. So, the one that system is instituted, that is the end. There is no way you can circumvent the system that we are going to put in place and bring in corruption. It can never happen in Biafra. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Simon, okay. for that. Can I say something okay. quickly? I'm going to stipulate a little bit of rule. So when the screen right. in the middle is flashing like that, it means we need to round up answering the question. Because I have okay. tons of people that want to come in. I have another caller now. Caller, go ahead, sir. Let's take it. Yeah. Hi. Go ahead. They can hear you. Hi. Please, we can hear you. Go ahead. Your name and where you're calling from, please. My name is Audrey Chirugo. Uh, I, want to, I want this question to go to Simon. Simon, please, you know, back home in Nigeria, what you know what you people or how you're going to handle the, the problem of our traditional rulers because, or maybe our elders? Because I can, I, like what I know and what I've noticed, they are the major problem of our people. How we are going to handle things? No longer take away their their. How will I put it? We will take away their right because they don't not. It is only um they give judgment or they, they decide whoever is having the most uh, money. They do no long. They no longer tell the people the truth. They no longer judge things the way it is because they solve no problem. Rather, they create more problems for us. We want things to be done. Like legally, not no longer through them because they are evil to our traditional rulers. Okay, thank you very much for that. Simon, can I help you out on this one? Yeah? Yes. The, the reason I want Mr. to help you out on this one is that sometimes it's better to leave the problem of a traditional ruler until later on. When you get there, you cross the bridge. If you start looking at that one now, you cannot leave the external battle and start fighting battle at home. So let's fight the external battle first. And then we will go back and fight the battle at home. I hope you are happy, Simon, with that. Yes, that, yeah, thank yeah, you, sir. Actually, that, that's, a good, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to take another call yeah. quickly, yeah? Please go ahead. Caller, <clears throat> your name, where you're calling from? You only got 30 seconds. Go ahead. Please go Hello. You have you have you have Hello. something in the background. Hello, you can hear okay, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, can it's hear perfect. You. Okay, uh, I want to talk to my brother Simon. Simon, oh, good evening, sir. Good evening, my brother. India here. I'm calling from India. My name is Obin now. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah yes, can we hear can you, hear yes. you Obin. Please go ahead. Okay. I, first of all, I want to thank you for the good job you people are doing for enlightening uh, most of our brothers, dear friends, who is in darkness. You understand me? The, my question will go to uh, the so-called prophets and prophetize in the uh, Biafra lands. Before, when we grew up, we don't see so many churches, so many men of God. But now, they are everywhere. They are also part of our problem. Because why? They don't preach against Nigeria. They always preach one Nigeria, one Nigeria. So my question is this. Like Israel, whatever you are, if you are a Muslim, if you are a Christian, whatever you are, you pray under Israel. You don't build this, you don't build that, you don't uh, discriminate anyone. So my question goes like this. When Biafra comes, because me, I know that Biafra is already here. But what is going to be the fate of all these man of God who are against our freedom, who don't preach but wait for brown envelope from the government? Thank you. Okay, can I answer that, that one? You. Go ahead, okay. Simon. Okay. 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 Yeah. I would have loved to answer this. I think. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> no, um, put, I, I think, think uh, you must take this question. This, this, uh, this, uh, this man of God falls to falls to the category of these uh, moles we talked about. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they cannot stop. They cannot stop Biafra from coming. But believe me, by the time the Biafra come, they will be more proud than you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, let me tell you something. Um, this whole thing about churches are not against I'm a Christian. But what you should understand that people are free. People are lazy. People are not. There's no jobs. By the time you create jobs, by the time you create jobs, the churches will be empty. By the time. They will be like living now. I live in California. Only my only my neighborhood here. Yeah. I can count three hundred companies here. Yeah. People will be so busy that they, they will they will even work on Saturday. So on Sunday, they'll go to church and do one hour and go back home. 
the system will face the fake ones away. I'm not saying the churches will just die, but mm -hmm. gradually, when there are more companies and parts, the churches will gradually take its shape. Thank you very much. I believe I have another call on the line, Mr. Ade. I have a caller, right? Hello. Yeah. My name is Adenipa. Hello, I'm Mr. Ade. I'm calling from India. Uh, yeah. may, we, may we have your name, please? Hello. Okay. Yes. Um. They I want your name. Sure. They want your name first. They want your name. My name. My name is Adenipa Ako. I am calling from You're India. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in. Okay. So please go ahead. I I want to thank uh, Mr. Simon Epa. He has been doing a great job. And um, I want to start by saying this. Our people need uh, sensitization. Our people need to be talked to. It's not only um, online. We need to meet them. We need to talk to our people in a place they call the so-called Niger Delta. Because most of them lost their heritage, they lost their culture, they lost their history, they don't know anything. So whenever you're talking about Biafra, it will be like you're bringing in war to them. But it's not a war. It, 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 it's, a, it's a way of going back to the origin, which is uh, everybody's responsibility. So please, I would like us to, you know, to include them, to bring them in. Because they don't know what they're doing. They've been brainwashed for years. And I think it's right time is the time is right now for us to go and engage them on one-on-one -on -one and talk to them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, can I say something on that one? Okay. Okay. I'm talking about sensitization, okay? Um, you know what? The, the deep mess we have been into for so many years now, especially the, the lies they've they sold to us, okay? So this thing has taken so much, uh, it has been deep rooted in us and it will take a lot of work to get people to get, I uh, mean, to get people to understand what we are fighting for, okay? It's not gonna be a day thing. It's not going to be a, um, like a snap, a snap of your fingers and things are working perfectly well, no. Um, that is what we are doing. That is why we're using the platform because some people, they say, when you come online, they say, no, you guys are only Facebook warriors. You're online making noise. And this is, this noise we're making is actually gospel. Okay. We are trying to preach the gospel to people to make them understand this is, this is the, the way we should go. We've been sold a life for so, such a long time. Okay. And so it will take a long time to bring people. We are not segregating anyone. Their friends are their friends, be it Ijo, be it from the Portacourt River State, we are all their friends, okay? Um, it will take a long time for them to uh, actually assimilate and understand what is going on, but we are not going to, so we keep pushing. We keep pushing, okay? Because at the moment, uh, the stage where we are right now, though we have those who are against the Biafran struggle and we have those who are in support, okay? We all are doing a great job and uh, we are trying as much as we can to bring everyone on deck. We are trying as much as we can to bring everyone on deck. All we want is unity, togetherness in Biafran land. No one is, uh, Biafra is not an Igbo affair. It's not an Igbo thing. It's a collective, it's a collective affair, you know, that borders around the, the whole Biafran nation. Okay, we have the Bibios, we have the Epic, we have the Ijaws, we have the, we have the robots. It's a, it's a group, it's a collective thing. So nobody is, is left behind. We're all taking everyone along. Thank you. Yes, uh, moderator. You know there is something yeah, that keep bothering me. Yes, there is something that keep bothering me. You know, somebody made a uh, somebody uh, the, that called the lady that called about about this our traditional ruler. It keep bothering me. Yeah. I want to like you know very briefly chip something there. Okay. And uh, hopefully that lady is listening. You see, the Nigeria state, the Nigeria system has corrupted our traditional rulers and Bam. it has Bam. become it has become more political than the traditional as it used to be so in biafra land we are not going to have political traditional rulers the traditional ruler is not, is not going to be political that is why you see them giving this kind of judgment that you are mentioning like somebody who bring the biggest money will be you know the case we favor him or anything like that in biafra land it is we are going back to root the route where we were, what we are doing in Biafra before we are purely traditional. They give a judgment according to 
the tradition and they respect the custom of the land. These days, Nigeria has corrupted everything and nothing, any norms is taking place when it comes to traditional rulers. So that is what we are going to look into in Biafra. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, hello, Miss Ade. Do I have any other call on the line? I think I have one more call on the line. Um, caller, please, where are you calling from and your name? Hello? Hello, could you please speak up a little bit louder? I'm very glad what you're doing. I'm happy. The way you guys are enlightening everybody, the way you guys are making us know what is going on, especially my greetings go to I greet you. So my question goes this way. A lot of people have been saying that we be friends that we have make, been making a lot of noise in the social media. Why some things are still going wrong? Like people are being killed on daily basis, villages are attacked. Like I'm, as I'm telling you, as I'm talking with you now, Fulani are still moving thousands of their young men with drugs, even in this lockdown, to all parts of Nigeria, even some of them heading towards Biafra land. <coughs> and to me, ironically, that is an orchestrated uh, kind of uh, distracting their soldiers. Because I don't see all those young men that food all those cattle trucks, cattle lorries, as ordinary alamajidis. Those are able young men that they are trying to fix in some places. I, don't, I believe they have plans. What are we doing in trying to put in check to this type of things? Because we don't, like it was we don't need to see what is the stone that is coming to our eyes and let, and let it hit us. Please. We need to put things like this in check now. They already they have started their, their, their soldiers, all the bushes in the Afro land, and they are still bringing more. They are still sending more of their soldiers. All these people that are coming in cattle lorries to all the, all the part of Nigeria, they are soldiers. Thank you very much. That is what I want you to address on, please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So. Yes. Please. Can I, can, I, can I comment on that? Please go ahead. All right. The thank you very much. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. The, uh, the issue of this Pulanese. Uh, inventing or coming to Biafra land in their numbers. It, is, it didn't start today. But one thing I want to assure every Biafrans is that IPOB, you see, this IPOB, you see, they are doing a very wonderful and tremendous job on the ground. It is not everything we will say on social media and all that. And if not for IPOB, believe me, this Biafra would have been overrun by now. But IPOB, under the leadership of Mazin Namdekano, is doing a wonderful job. Another thing we are doing also is to make sure that we alert the public of what is about to come. Any, we have the best intelligence gathering in Africa. I, this is not boasting. Biafra agitation of today have the best intelligence gathering in Africa. Before anything happened to Biafra, even from the day they start planning it, we already know. So... We are putting everybody on alert. We are alerting the governors. Apart from that, there are underground the things going on, like Mazin Namdikano have always said, by the time the Afran, uh, IPOB will launch their security uh, uh, agents, it will be known. Everybody will know about it. So for now, we are monitoring and following everything that happens and about to happen in Biafra land. So nothing is, uh, nothing is uh, under the shadow, you know, when it comes to the Biafra agitators. Thank you. I will have another call on the line. Where are you from? Hello. Thank you. My name is Most Enter, and I'm calling from Kingdom of Netherlands. 
Go ahead, Thank please. You. Yes, I want to start uh, by saying uh, different the studio good evening from here, and also to my brother Simon Eba. Brother, you're doing a good work, and I keep on keeping on. And uh, Thank you. I just want to make my little contribution to the uh, testing program. But before then, I want to say something to my sister. I overheard her saying that uh, people are saying, most people are saying that we are Facebook and we are just making a whole lot of noise and all that. We are Facebook warriors and internet warriors. Yeah, let let it be because the Holy Book say that the faith come by hearing, but by hearing the word of God. Okay, so which means if you don't hear, uh, 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 the faith will not come if you don't hear. So this girlfriend we are debating for, it will come by keep on layer. The, the Facebook follower will keep on will keep on preaching the good news and that faith will come and those that don't believe they will believe when they when we keep on non-stop shouting and repeating and repeating all that. So the, this faith will come by hearing and by hearing the word of God, which is the other. Now I also must say this, and this is what some part of my message to those that are still sitting on the face and those that still believe that their crown will not come. I'm here in Europe, and I'm telling them, based on experience, that the whole of 27 EU countries join together, exclude, in fact, if you include the United Kingdom, making it the 28 EU country, their population is about 540 million people. If you take EU out, sorry, if you take the United Kingdom out, EU population, 27 EU population is at 440 million. That is just, and the, the British zoo called Nigeria is 200 million. That is one country. When about 27 countries join together here, they are about 440 million. Now I ask them, if population, if the number is mind, if there is advantage in the number, what makes you think that your colonial master will not take that advantage? What makes you think that if the population is a number, what makes you think that we are wiser than them? They came just together there and we are there, we are celebrating our slavery. We are celebrating our captivity. Our people is a guy and we stand up and share that. Let everybody go get it separately. Because if the population is a mighty, I see no reason why Finland will be about 5 million. Norway will be about 10 million. I mean, who knows? There are so many EU countries here. They are 1.7 1, 1. million. They are also a lot. They are 800,000. This is a population of the nation. But in that British zoo, they join 200 million people. Okay, we're going to let you go now. Thank okay. you for your question. Yeah. Because of time, we're going to let them answer it. Yeah, Simon or the, anybody in the studio? Yes, yes, thank you very much. Uh, the issue of uh, this population is what we have been, uh, you know, uh, focus, we have focused on that population. We have reminded them that the population of Nigeria and the diversity of Nigeria is the biggest crime against humanity. First of all, it is not them. Don't say them. It is those Nigerians. It is the Nigerians that allow them, themselves to be fooled by believing that the bigger the population, the better. It is never the bigger the population, the better. Osiba John, who is a vice president today, came to say the population of Nigeria is making it difficult for them to fight COVID-19. So it is not only in COVID-19, it is also in the economy and uh, governing of Nigeria, it is very difficult to govern Nigeria with different mentalities and the kind of population you have. It can never be well and it can never work. So when we divide Nigeria, this is the great Nigeria, into five, into three, into four, whichever way we want to disintegrate, dis it will be more easier and more better to progress. This, this is just a fact. Thank you. Hello? Mr. Ade, do I have another call on the line? Hello, good evening. My name is Oji. Hello, good evening. I'm calling from Germany. Uh, okay, could you please make it I, brief as I, well, please? I really want to thank Mazenande Kalo, Shimia Ebe, and the Uche Mefo, and the Jojo Ebe, because they are, they are the people that have, have put 
more spirit of their friend in me. And I really thank them so much. Each time I listen to them, especially Madman the Carlos Simeone, I don't sleep at night. Okay. Uh, my own my own humble advice is now Nigeria is weak. Nigeria is totally collapsed. Anything we want to do, I, I I believe this is the time we can do it. With this time of this pandemic, is the is the most opportune time we have to do anything we have to do. Okay, many people we even myself I can volunteer to go back to Africa to fight for my mother's land. I believe anything that has to be done should be done within this period of pandemic because they have shown that Nigeria is not existing. And Martin and the Kalo have been shouting since 2012. Anybody that has not heard his voice should follow the, the dead and go. Okay, so we have to do everything to. To, to secure our young women because they are not going, they are raping them. And the, the more they rape them, the more they, they impregnate them, the more they want a slave in our land. The more they rape them, the more they want a slave in our land. So it's better we do everything possible to secure our country this, in this time of pandemic. Thank you, Nigeria is already gone. And Nigeria is already good. I think I just wish that everything we have to do with you in this period. Thank you very much. Hello? That's it. I think we lost the, the network right there. I think uh, we, we lost him there. Okay. Did you but hear his question, though? Did you hear his end. question? Yeah. It got I think, I think it was an advice. Yeah. It was, not, yeah, it was an advice. Yeah. Of advice. So oh. it is noted. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Yeah. Go to the next caller. Please. Hello? Hello, caller. Good evening. Hello, good Hello. evening. Uh, good I'm evening. Dr. Wilson, I'm calling from London. Hi, Dr. Wilson, you're welcome on board. Yeah, um, good evening, everyone, especially my brother, um, Simon. Uh, thanks good evening, to everybody. My question goes like this um, If Biafra come, what would be, uh, what would be um the plan of our brothers and sisters those that um missing in action or maybe being de um um deported or uh, would i call it those that have been sent to something like tanzania angola um santome gabon and the uh, santa isabel and the uh, ivory coast how do you what do you people think about these people because nowadays our elders don't even care about those people and they, those well, some of them they know where they come from to the our people doesn't ask about them they don't feel very good about us please i why i would like you people to give a little bit light about that are we going to forget those people as a missing in action or what will be the plan we have many in victoria and then so so on and so forth thank you very much thank scholar you. thank you simon can i quickly okay. take yes. this one for you guys yeah okay, okay. all right see when you're building a house you don't you don't look for who is going to live in one room or the other room before yeah. the house gets finished building before mm -hmm. you finish building yeah. the house what's the point in saying mm. when the house gets finished you don't even have the plan finished. yet you don't even buy the land yet yeah yeah buy the land start building the house make sure the house is taking shape then you can start saying oh. this is what i want to do in that room or that is mm -hmm. what i want to do exactly in that room. yeah ne next color please exactly yeah thank you your name where you're calling from Hello. Them down at the back. Hello. Hello, Kola. May we have your name and where you're calling from, please? All right, all right, all right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, please. Go ahead. Okay, I'm Ike. I'm Ike. I'm calling from India. Good to have you, Ike. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, please, I, I want to start by thanking you all by uh, by say, by giving you very kudos for all you have been doing, especially this... Um, Social media campaign uh, is, is, is really reading a very good result because uh, through the responses all over Nigeria, you can is that it's really working. It's really working. But the area I want to also know, uh, see if there's anything we can do about this. Uh, uh, those are our brothers from the areas like um, the Niger Deltans are some part of uh, Benue State. I think uh, 
what strategy are you actually putting in place in order to sensitize those, those people in those areas? Because you look at this whole Biafran struggles and agitation and everything we are doing, trying to make people understand what is going on, the reason why we should leave Nigeria, the reason why we need Biafran. Those set of people think this whole thing is all about evil, evil stuff. They think it's, it's an evil agitation or evil program or evil war or something. But they don't understand. So what actually is putting in place to as in the strategy is being planning to make sure that those people that could not be able to get through to social medias or online or whatever can be able to get get the real information, what is needed to be done to them. Those ones in the villages, those ones in the streets, those who also have access to internet. These are the key set of people that want to grow, be able to get to them and let them understand why we are actually talking about Biafra. So what are the strategies put in place in order to make all these things work? So that is my point. Thank you very much. Okay, over to you guys in the studio. Okay. Which would you like to take one? Yeah, I don't really have an answer to that. I think Simon can take one. Okay. Simon, go yes. ahead. Well, uh, let me comment on that. You see, uh, when people are talking about what strategies we have in place, uh, about the people in Benue, about the people in Niger Delta and all that. You see, this is the reason why I have always said it. Anybody that wants to support the Biafra agitation should first of all throw your weight behind those people that you feel that have sacrificed everything and doing everything to make sure they create awareness. And as it stands now, uh, uh, IPOB under leadership of Mazin Namdekano has done that. And there is no crowd, there is no city, there is no village you go today in this in the older uh, eastern region that you don't see IP, IPOB members there. And when we come online to preach like this, they are listening to us, and that is why whenever we are preaching, we are telling them to note the things down. We are here online to teach so that you will go and preach further. That is the idea. The idea is that we cannot be in all the places at the same time. Most 90% of the people listening to us probably are all Biafrans. And when they're listening to us, they have to go now uh, uh, forward and start preaching what we are preaching. Of course, we are looking at in, in, a, in, a, in a no distance time, we will have more formidable grassroots uh, 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 um, awareness in all the cities and all the villages that made up Biafra. But now I am telling you, the Biafrans and the IPOB are almost everywhere, including in that, in that Benue state you are talking about. So, but gradually, we will get there. Gradually. Because what we are doing now is something we did not do in the 60s. That is why it is very, very imperative. Because every day, new person, new person, new people, they will listen to us. And they will learn something from our, our education. Thank you very much. We will get there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that input, Simon. I believe I still have more callers on the line. There is one more caller on the line. Hello, My caller. name is Oscar Ayan. I am calling from uh, Liverpool in uh, England, United Kingdom. Hi, Oscar. You're welcome on board. Yeah, my question is this. Um, I just want to thank uh, Simon. Simon is my good friend. Uh, Simon, um, this is Oscar from Liverpool. Oh, my question is straight. Oscar, um, my brother. We are uh, agitating for a new uh, for a Biafran state. My question is this: the politicians that are in the, in Biafra already, who are not part of this agitation, are very very wealthy. What is the guarantee that after this Biafra is achieved, these politicians who are criminals, who have stolen money, will not hijack the system and begin the same thing that we are suffering in Nigeria in the new Biafra? That's my question. Thank you very much. Can Let I, me, can I that? quickly take that one as well, quickly, yeah? To make it okay, easy so okay. that we can be yeah. faster, right? Okay. See, okay. when you want to hit your mate and you want to enjoy your mate, you don't put the mate on the, on the plate. You hide your mate. Because if you put your meat yes. where everybody can get hold of it, they're gonna take it and eat mm -hmm. it from you. Exactly. Let's keep our meat for now, and then when the time yes. comes to eat the meat, we bring the meat out and eat the meat. Thank you very much. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Next caller. Another yeah, call. uh, the reason why we are calling in is that for us to have this at the back of our heart, that if we don't have a strategy, even if it's behind strategy, that we are not going to bring out, we need to have a strategy because as we are fighting, Simon is always 24 hours on, on the on, on the internet. And Nandi Khan is always 24 hours on the internet. But there are people who are plotting on how to adjust the thing in the end. So we have to have it at the back of our heart. Because otherwise, these people will have their money back. They will use their money to buy over the whole system and destroy the system that these guys have suffered to, to build. So we have to have it at the back okay, of our heart that we must hold okay, what we hold. Okay, let, let, Simon, let Simon deal with that one for you. Why, Simon? Yeah, let me, let, me address the, let me address this issue. You see, when you look at the people you are talking about, they are not in Biafra land, they are not even up to 0.5% of Biafrans. And the people that are in front line of Biafra of Biafra struggle today are not ready to compromise even a dime. And the constitution and the, uh, the, the, uh, the system we are going to adopt in Biafra land will not even allow anybody to buy anybody that. off. That is, that is what I want to assure you. It will never <laughs> allow anybody to buy. Bring your money, bring your billions. The system will crush it down. Perfect. Of course, of course, I believe that answered his question. Because in Biafra, we are not going to tolerate any kind of uh, corruption or bribery or looting. It's not, it's not going to be business as usual. Nobody's looting anything and nobody's buying anything. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I have another call on the line. Please. Hello. Good evening or good morning. Okay. Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. My name is Good evening. Bernard. I'm calling from Barcelona, Spain. My question goes, goes like you. this. A lot of Biafrans are afraid to support this Biafran struggle because of the investment outside Biafra land, especially mm. some that have investment in Lagos and from Nigeria, though I have to be one of the people that have brothers and uncles a lot of investment outside Biafra land. So I, I, I want to ask what will be what will be the advice that we can give them to kill this fear in them so that they can be able to jo join this struggle and all of us will be okay. able to in one I will take this one. In, in one piece, make Biafra come <laughs> okay, okay, okay. so fast and quick. Okay, thank you very much. You can turn your seat. Yeah, Simon, go ahead. Okay, uh, I think this is a very important one, which we will talk as well. You see, <laughs> when we when we when we get when we get Biafra, every dime, every property you have, anywhere in Nigeria will be secured. You see. These people should know that Nigeria is not the only country that, that is going to disintegrate. This is not only Nigeria. We are, we are still going to be named. We are still going to be traveling to Nigeria. And the people who are in Arewa or Duduwa Republic will still do business. So long as you live by the, by the constitution and the law of the Duduwa Republic, you can go there and continue your business. Those who, 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 who want to stay in Arewa Republic, if you want to abide by the law of Arewa Republic, you want to live there, you are free to live there. You, we are still we are still in a uh, global uh, village. So when we disintegrate Nigeria, it doesn't mean that uh, well, Duduwa is no more existing or Arewa is no more existing. So let me use example. When you see, for example, country like, uh, like uh, um, uh, Soviet Union, when they disintegrated, all the people that uh, made up other state, they own property in Russia. Now, Russia did not uh, burn down their, their properties. The properties were there hmm. because they are covered hmm. under international law. You can't do it. Yeah. The Nigeria Arewa Republic cannot be more than international international law in the, or, interna or international community. Uh, Duduwa Republic cannot be more than international community. Forget about what happened yep. in Biafra War. It was the ignorance of the people in those days. And that is the narrative we are changing now. It cannot happen yes. in the 21st century. Thank you very much. Their property will be secured. Okay, you, go ahead. Yeah. Someone already covered the, the whole... Okay, uh, yeah, he, 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 he said it all. Good evening, he said it, my he said fellow Biafra. Good evening, my people. 
Hello, hello, I'm going to ask any question. I want to answer somebody that said, what about the Costa Rica, the, the Niger Delta? We don't have now, and we have wake up. And Sorry, can we know your name, from please? Costa Rica. Hello? Uwa, Sophia, Biafra. Hi, Uwa, how are you? We the Costa Rica. <laughs> that color that I call that, what about the... Uh, Niger data. We don't have any Niger data. We are Biafra. That is what I want to tell you guys. And don't worry about the Niger data. Worry about yourself. We everybody with answer his father's name where Biafra come. When the referendum come. We in Niger, we, uh, we that came from the coastal region, we are full of Biafra. So nobody should come out and become and be distracting our people, asking a useless question. What about the coastal region? Where we are working on it. People that own us in bondage, who put them where they belong. We are, we are, we have seen life now. We, we are, this is not the time for people to come and be asking, where is the coastal region? We are fighting for it, okay? Thank you, my people. God bless you. That's what I want to contribute. Thank you very much for that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, do I have another color? Yes. More colors. Hello, good evening, good morning. May I know your name and where you're calling from, please? Could you please repeat that? My name is Kelechi. Oh, I'm calling from the state of Israel. Hello, Kelechi. Uh, welcome on board. Could you please go ahead? Hello? I think we lost him. Hello. Okay, uh, I just want to make a suggestion here. I live here in Israel, and I would love Biafra to adopt some of the system here in Israel. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Hello. Okay. Hello. Okay, I said, hmm? I am calling from the state of Israel. I would like Biafra to adopt uh, some some Israel Israeli um, system of government uh, or the way they run their things in Israel. In a situation where every male child that is being born in Biafra land will be a military, as in will be, will be a road into military. Hello. Yes, go ahead. We are listening. Hello. I said. Okay, let me let me one, let, one, let, one, let me address you. that. Let me address that. Go ahead, Simon. Simon please, him, please go yeah. ahead. Yes, I will. I will assure. I will assure him that Biafra is going to adopt that system. It is not only Israel. It is not only Israel that is uh, practicing that system. Most of the European country does it, and Biafra is going to adopt that system. Every male child, as soon as you get to 18 years, you will have a compulsory military service. And there is opportunity or possibility to choose to have a community service instead of the military service. And if you have a military service, there are, there are uh, some kind of uh, bonuses you can be getting in the society. For example, if you go to search for a job, you will be given a special uh, recommendation if you have a military service. So every Biafran from 18 years, male, will have military service. And the female will be by choice. The female is that if you want, you can go to military service, but it is not going to be a composite. But the military service will be the national service in Biafran land. And we will see that because it has worked, it is a way to protect the, the sovereignty of the nation, and it has worked in all the good economy we have in all over Europe and most of the, even in America, I think they have the, the system in America as well. They have military service in America, if I'm not mistaken. So we are going to adopt that system, yes. I hope you answered your question. Uh, more callers. Uh, we actually don't have so much time. Uh, we've got a few more minutes to go because I need to let the guys go and then uh, get some quality sleep. 
Okay, uh, Boy, let's take some more few colors and then we and then we call it today. Good Hello, afternoon. good evening. My name is Emmanuel and I'm calling from New York. Um, I just joined the program now and uh, I love everything you guys are doing. Keep it up. All the best. Um, You're welcome. This, this, this movement will surely come to pass because um, everybody is suffering it now. What is going on in Nigeria? Yes. Oh my God, I can't even say anything, but I just wish everybody the best, but let's Everybody go its own way. Thank you so much, and God bless you all. Thank you, Thank you. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. Um, do we take more calls, or should we call it a day? Hello. Go ahead. Hello. Okay. Hello. Um, my name is Um Ibok. I'm calling from India once again. Um, I want to make a contribution. I want to correct one impression. Population is not the problem we are, we we had. I should call it hard because I don't believe in Nigeria anymore. The problem is not population. The problem we ha we are having right now in Nigeria is because you cannot put pack of wolves, dogs, cats, and goats in the same van. It can't work. It never worked. So. I don't want us to believe that when we have a population of um, most people in Biafra land, we're going to have issues. No, it's not going to work that way. The population of Nigeria is not a cause. The people that made the population are the cause. So I want to correct, correct that impression. Thank you very much for giving me a second opportunity. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Mm. Thank you. That is actually... Yes. I'm calling from the state of Israel. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, hello, caller. Good morning. Good evening. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Good evening. Hello. hello. Good evening. You're welcome on board. Please may you. Hello. We can hear you. Hello, good evening. Yeah, my name is Kone Abe, calling from the UK. I work with Republic of uh, Urugua. All right. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, I just want to tell, uh, please, I want to ask uh, Mr. Simon about, uh, yeah, let me first go this way. You've only got 30 seconds uh, left, sir. You need to do it quickly, sir. Okay. Please, I want to know the kind of, uh, the type of system of government that will be adopted if Biafra is actualized. Because we don't want what happened in South Sudan. So you can tell what, if you look at what happened in South Sudan after the gain of independence from the Northern Sudan, you know there is still conflict in South Sudan today because they could not reach an concrete agreement before they got independence. So I want to hear from you. What kind of system do you guys want to obtain or use? Because it's, it's easy to get independent, but after the independent, what's going to happen? Because we know we have a lot of ethnic groups in the Biafra land. So I just want to hear from you, sir. Okay, I'm going to give that to Simon okay, first, thank you very and after that, I will come yes, to Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are going to adopt a true federalism. When you when you look at when you look at uh, um, I will give you an example of the kind of system we are going to adopt. Look at take a United Arab Emirates for example, Dubai. Dubai have seven different emirates. No, but people don't know about it. They have seven different emirates. They run every emirate have their own autonomy, independent. They control their resources, control everything, and then contribute to the center. Of course, I'm not saying that we are going to run emirates, but I'm just telling you. We are going to run through federalism. So in Biafra land, every, every uh, state that made up Biafra or province, depending on what we are going to adopt, will have autonomy in, on their resources, independent. They will run their economy, run everything, every natural resources they have, and then they contribute to the center. So it is not like what we are having in Nigeria now. It will be totally autonomy of this either province or either state, depending on what we are going to adopt. But it is going to be like Dubai, like the system of Dubai. Thank you. 
Thank you, right there. I don't know if <laughs> we still have more colors on the line. Okay, um, what I will do is I will just take uh let me see what time it is. Uh we already spent two hours already on this show. So I'll be taking like maybe three more calls and we call it a day. How All about right. that? Yeah, that's three more calls. Three more calls, we call it a day. Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Kim Patrick, and uh, I'm calling from uh, and, uh, I, I don't want to ask you this, I don't want to from what I'm asking. As regard to uh, the, the rich people coming to hijack Biafra when Biafra must have, um, you know, uh, been achieved. I just want a, a lot of our people to understand that the rich, corrupt politicians understand that already that the power is changing hand and they know their position already. They still have a yes. chance to make amends and join the struggle, come out of their pockets and join the, the struggle for Biafra restoration. And secondly, I want to talk about the issue of people from the coastal region. Somebody called and talked about the issue. I'm from Delta State myself. And when some of our people from the coastal region look at the likes of Umayya Wood, Emmanuel uh, Iwanyawa, some of these uh, Igbo leaders going to Abuja to negotiate for Igbo presidency. And if the people in the coastal region are contemplating to join in the struggle, how do you think they are going to look at the struggle? You know, so we should focus more on these people who, the Igbos, our own Igbos who are sabotaging the struggle from the, from the top before we start thinking about the people in the East Coastal region are ready to join the struggle, but they are looking up to the likes of these men who go to negotiate the presidency rather than joining their own people for their first struggle. You know, so we should focus more on these people who are sabotaging the struggle for their first restoration and every other thing will take place. And I think uh, that has made some point. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. That's good. That was a contribution. So you need you need the next caller, yeah? I'm gonna put the next caller to you now. Next caller, please. Okay. Your name, uh, where you're calling from, and go ahead. Okay, my name is Debra Lade. Yes, Joyce. Hi, Debra. I'm calling from London. Hello. I just want to ask uh, Simon ask my question, please. Yeah, please. I just want to find out about uh, European people. Are they part of prayer prayer? Because I may be confused. I don't understand today. They are, in, they are not among tomorrow they are among so i just want to know what's Sorry? going on with us could you repeat your question please Europe. yeah no, Europe what I'm saying is that Europe, Europe, okay. in doubt of states are they part of prayer can, prayer, how, but they are not how can you be asking how can you be asking a call biafra uh, to whether you are part of biafra urobo is a is part of biafra from the, i have given i have actually given lecture on urobo on the uh, the formation of Biafra from the old eastern region. So you, how can you be asking question whether Urobo is part of Biafra? <laughs> Please, my sister Urobo is part of Biafra, and Urobo is not even part of Biafra. Urobo is Biafra. Um, can I chip in something? Um, get in touch yes. with me. I will, I will connect your sisters and brothers from Urobo that are championing the struggle of the Biafra in your in your Urobo village. For example, if they from Urobo, if they one of them from Urobo, and there are a lot of them too. So if you don't know how to reach out to them, get in touch with me. I will connect you to them. Thank you very much. And and because of this question, because of this question, I promise you, uh, during next week, I'm going to make a live broadcast on Urobo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, um, we've got one more color, just only one more color, and then we call it a we call it a night. This is the uh, this is our last color for tonight. Hello, color. Uh, may we have your name and where you're calling yes, from, my please? My name is Brazil, and I'm calling from the United States. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, we didn't hear your name. Your name again? Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Brazil, I'm calling from the United States. I wanted to make a comment on um. Uh, 
one of the things that the caller said about the old politicians you know, in the new Biafra, how we're going to deal with them, because they're going to be money bags and they're going to be able to corrupt the people that are um, in the new Biafra to become like the old Nigerian. But the thing that you have to understand is that the Biafrans today that we have, they have already rejected these politicians even with their money. The reason yes. why they're winning elections is because of the Reagan. <laughs> so they're not going to have that chance in Biafra at all. In fact, if Biafra comes, they're going to be looking for a way to escape from Biafra. Mm. Okay? So the idea that they're going to bring in their money and corrupt the Biafrans in, Niger in Biafra when Biafra comes, is that illusion. It's not going to happen. Today they have been rejected. If you look at Okay, I think we lost the caller. Just mm. Yeah, we lost him. You can lost close him. it now. Uh, can I say something before you guys go and do it? We encourage okay, people please. to support this channel. We have 838 people watching and we only got 175 shares. It would be better if everybody share, everybody that's watching now, share, so that we can have more awareness. And this is going to happen yes. every Thursday. And Friday, the, both the Biafran, the Delta, the Odudua, they will all come back and sit on the same panel. On Tuesday, it will be Yoruba alone. On Thursday, it will be Bear Friend alone. On Friday, it will be both of them. All, all of them. So that we can start working in unity. Yeah? Collaboration. This is the best way forward. Please, everybody yes. that's on now, 400 and 800 and 846 are on now. Everybody should click the, like, uh, the share button. Share it. Like it. Right? And let it go viral. So that people, more people can see. The more people that see all these guys, they are very busy. They don't have time to come and sit down here every day if, you, if it's not going to go far. But when new people, they have their own crowd already. They've seen it. Let your crowd, your crowd, let them see what they're doing. And then that way, we can try and get it across to all people. If you support what we're doing, exactly. please support us. Support Simon. Support everybody doing it. And my young lady there, she's doing a fantastic job. Today is her first day. Simon, you know what happened? Yes. Yesterday, I said, I just leave. We started the program tomorrow. And she said, no. And someone said, are you forcing her? I said, I'm not forcing her. I've just discovered a talent that would be useful for Biafra Yeah, Jocelyn. Nation. Jocelyn is good. <laughs> I must say that. And she, she, she's, 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 she's a I must commend you, Jocelyn. I, I dock my cap. I clap for you. You've done a fantastic job tonight. And this is the beginning you, of your success. And <laughs> this you, is Mr. the beginning Thank of you. success for Port Biafran and the Yoruba land and the Delta people. We will be on enslaved. We've been enslaved before, but we will undo this enslavement and we will go further. Please subscribe to the channel, uh, like the page, follow us. This there is more to come. And if you can contribute to this course, please, we have a GoFundMe page that you can support only if you can. It's not compulsory. That is not the aim. The aim is to set us free first. Right? Exactly. Please, let's yes. work together yes. and get there. I'll leave everything back to yes. you. Uh, uh, just laying in the studio. All right. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to say a very big thank you, Mr. Ade. Uh, even though it came as a sudden yesterday to me, and then I was like, if I had known, I wouldn't have come on your page last night because after I watched Enam the Kano, I had to jump onto your um, to your page, and then all of a sudden, boom, it came to my face. So I was thinking I was going to be missing in action today. I even told a friend of mine that I will not. <laughs> I'm going to disappear. That you not get a uh, hold of me, but. Uh, here I am, and I'm so much grateful uh, we were able to do it. Uh, this is my first time ever to be online. I've never done like a, a personal um, show before. This is my first time to do such. I am grateful, and I thank you all for coming to, to listen to us and to get more awareness. Thank you, Simon, for, for obliging to come. You know, I, even, I had to pull much. him out. <laughs> Even though he's very busy, I had to pull him out. Uche is the last yeah, minute, thank and <laughs> thank you, Uche, for also acknowledging to to join me. And then I'm so grateful, really. I'm I'm humbled my, my myself. Own, my own Uche. <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> Someone I'm call me. Grateful. Call me after this program. Call <laughs> me. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Um, I have to go. All right. Thank you, Simon. Okay. 
All right. Thank you, guys. And uh, thank you, everyone. Um, it's been a great night. And uh, we call it we call it a night. Uh, we actually okay. have to go and get rest. Okay? It's my pleasure to so be thank here. You. Okay. Thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you those online for coming, my friends. I see they're all calling my name. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you very much for that. I'm going to give it to Frank Bello now to continue the show. So there I left it. I think he's done a runner, apparently. I think he's just done a runner. Frank Bello, are you there? Frank Bello? Okay, guys, stay there. We're going to continue. Simon, thank you. Uh, the other gentleman, lastminute.com man, that you've done a fantastic show tonight. Thank you. I'll let you go. Unless you want to continue with us, but I know Simon has to go. Simon, God bless you. We see you maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe next month. We see you soon. Stay there, young man in cap. If you can still continue with us, let me try and bring this man back, and then we're gonna continue. I hope everybody is enjoying the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to Frank Bello quickly. I'm gonna try and bring him back so that he can continue where he stopped. It. Just one second, guys. The phone is not gonna stop crying today. It's it's a nightmare on M Street, but we will try and fix it. Uh, Uche, I want to say a very big thank you to you again for honoring our invitation. Let me just look for Frank quickly. Frank Bello, Frank Bello. I'm sure if he's listening, he will reconnect. But I don't think he's listening. He disconnects so quickly. Uh, one second, please. Uh, Frank, you're not supposed to come off the line, please. Could you log in back? You're going to take over, please? Uh, uh, I come yeah, come back online now. Yeah, we're going to continue. Uh, you to send me, uh, the link? No, use, use the same, use the same uh, link. Yeah, use the same link. Okay. okay. And uh, Jocelyn, I'm going to try and bring some peop more people online. And uh, you have a choice. You can continue with them. You can be part of Frank team. Or you can say you want to go. It doesn't matter. You've done a seriously fantastic job tonight. And I'm so, so, so proud of you. When you say someone is proud, uh, you are just like a daughter to me. And I'm very, very proud of you tonight. I've actually pinned the GoFundMe thing underneath there. If anybody wants to, please. It is not the motive of this program. It is only if you can. If you cannot... Don't, please don't kill yourself for that. There are better things we can do together. It's just to make sure it goes well for everybody, especially for people that we have to support and do things for. So I'm going to be sending uh, the login details to Olayo Mikoiki, who's going to be coming in again onto this show. I'm going to be playing Jocelyn while we're doing that so that it doesn't get boring. <music>
me now. Go ahead. Okay. <sighs> okay. Frank. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, sir. <laughs> are we, we, are, we are not live, are we? Oh, we, we are live. live. I can see you. You are live. You are live. You are live. Am, yes, I, am you I, are. I live online? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Jocelyn, um, I think, um, to be very honest with you, um, you've delivered uh, immaculate night and i have to congratulate you if i'm your lecturer and if i'm asked to because if you are at the university this is how you do the presentation and your lecturer will then mark and if i'm asked to give you a score i'll 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 be very, very generous to you. I won't give you 10 out of 10, but I'll give you nine out of 10. And that is an A star as a first timer, as someone who's never done or handled information, communications. You just, you just picked it up naturally from, you see, can you see how things are imbibed in someone? and how quickly the CEO of Heritage TV, Mr. Ade Tomo, quickly discovered your hidden talent. See, this thing, see, the skill that you have just demonstrated today, that the CEO of Heritage TV, the boss, managed to bring out into the open for the whole world to see the potentials that's been buried inside you in your subconscious mind that you were unable to tap into. See, Mr. Ade was able to tap into that and then, you know, discover you and then brought you into the limelight. See, I'm not going to tell you some of the people that were watching this program tonight, but Somebody actually posted and then said a query Madu was actually watching you live. That is the beauty of this. And you've done it professionally. You've never been inside it. You've delivered and you've made the Biafran nation a proud nation. And I've been telling you time after time, that there's something yes. inside you i've been telling you that there's something inside you that biafra will need and i've told you in the new mm -hmm. nation that will emerge look i'm not a pastor and i'm not a prophet i'm not but i can see vision and when those visions are flying, I see them flying past me and I grab them and I say it as it is. You are a raw living woman. You are a raw talent. And Mr. Ade, thank you very much for discovering this. You've just discovered someone that nobody's ever thought what she's capable of doing. Not many people. Look, you don't have to go to the university. You don't have to go to the university before that talent is hidden. It's just for someone out there to discover and then bring you into the limelight. And that's it. Qualification is just an added authority. If you have to go into journalism or mass communication now, just like um, I think the last uh, woman I respected so much in Biafra land. Do you know who that person was? Or who that person is? Onyeka Owenu. Me, when it comes to when it comes to prof professional job, I don't discriminate because my father was never someone who discriminated. In fact, I think 
during my father's period, my father made a lot of Igbo young lad as at that time achieved their dreams. You see, the legacy Mr. Ade Thomas is now living behind is discovering you because what you what he's done is that you are going to develop those coming behind you. You have just discovered who you are tonight. Thank you, sir. Maybe Mr. Adeju, <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mr. Adeju, Mr. Adeju, do you want to um, add to this because um, I don't want to get too carried away? Not, not at the moment. I'm just <laughs> trying to organize the rest to come in here. Yeah? Oh, <laughs> you want to organize um, Simon Epa and the rest to come in? No, I'm organizing Matai no. Okurubido and uh, Alayomiko Iki to come in. So I'll leave the grant to you okay. guys tonight. Okay, yeah, that, that would be nice. That would be nice. That would be nice. So uh, as um, as Mr. Mr. Thomas is busy organizing that, now, um, the only thing now that I'm going to advise you, um, Jocelyn, is that you've Sorry. managed to you've managed to crack that talent in you. Now it is now up to you. To control you are you are already successful and then it is now up to you as an individual to manage your success you are you are now successful look forget about money for now because a man is not measured by the billions or the millions he's got in his account if a man is managed is measured by how successful he is I'll tell you a story that my father told me. And this was some of the wisdom. I'm not too sure if many of the people that want to share this wisdom, wisdom will share it with me. Because in Yoruba land, there's a proverb that says, That is, a child who knows how to wash his hands will eat with elders now let me tell you my father told me if i grow up and this was when i was when i was a child when i was in primary school going into form one primary six going to form one my father said when you grow up instead of you running after money don't run after money because if you run after money, you'll be, you'll be, you, it's like you are chasing your own shadows. And Jocelyn, if you chase your own Sir. shadow, can you catch it? Can you, if you, if you are chasing your own shadow, can you catch your own shadow? No, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. You cannot. So when you run after money, it's like you are running and you want to catch your own shadow. You know what? My dad then said, rather than run after money, run after success. Yes. Run after why and how you should be successful in life. Now, he said, run, in the process of you run, trying to run after success, that journey can take you up to 50 or 60 years. If God prolongs your life, but in the act of running after you being successful, my dad said, because you have not paid any attention or you've neglected money, at the end, money will get jealous because you paid more attention to your success than him. Money will get jealous and then overtake you and then you don't have that money because you neglected. You said, oh, damn borrow that money. What is, what is, that just ordinary spirit. Let me run after something that is, you know, liquid. Because success, you can you can measure and you can trace success. What you've just demonstrated today, you've just showcased how successful you're going to be in the media world, in information <laughs> handling, in information dissemination, and anyone who's got the power of inv information rules the world. That's what you've just done. And I want you right now to now begin to know how you're going to manage
approach of success. Management. You have to make sure that the success you the, the yoke that you've broken today, because it's like you've broken the ice. How do you manage it so that you can move from one stage of your life and that profession that has just been discovered to the next? It's like you'll be moving, and as you move, you'll be improving. People will then begin to respect you. And that is when integrity then comes in. You don't have to sabotage your integrity because let me tell you, wolves will come to you and you have to decipher whether they are wolves. They will entice you. Some will want to rope you in. I've been there. And in the same process, make no mistakes, some people will get jealous along the line and they will be looking for way of how they will bring you down but when you are focused and you are consistent with what you have to do and you are looking at the front you are looking in front of you you are crossing the tunnel and you know that by the time you come out of the tunnel there's light at the end of the tunnel that is how you should be seeing life as for now because people will lay broken bottles People will stab you in the back. I've gone through it all. I have gone through the worst. Look, the worst that can happen, I've lost my family, I've lost my wife, I've lost my children. It's just only now. I was telling you privately that my I I had, you know, my wife called me and she said, when last did I spoke to uh, the last three? And I said, oh, the, the, the second, this just, on the other side of the block from you, the two are at home. The one that is my first, my first child that is got her own place outside um, your environment. I said I talked to that one regularly. She said, "Okay, I know," but uh, I said, "So why?" Should it? So they don't know that I told you. But that is it because there's a lot of a lot of problems for come. Some people will say, "I will just be why are you doing this," but they want to distract you from it. But you have to be focused. You've just discovered yourself. And you've just discovered exactly what you can do. And you are going to get better by next week. You've cracked this by next week. Your confidence, everything about the way you handle information, about how you treat information, how you, you will learn how you can classify some information that are not supposed to go. Some information. When they come into your possession, how do you treat them? If you have to go into the unit to get a degree, it's just an authority, maybe a BA, a mass communication, or in journalism. It's just a treat, an authority. Oh, who wrote that thing? Oh, it is just the normal. Oh, where which institution gave gave her the authority? Oh, this institution. Nobody will question you because you have authority behind you. Mr. Mr. Thomas, are we set? Yes, uh, Mr. Fata is here now for you guys. So I'm going to leave it on this screen so that you can have conversation. Right. Go ahead now. And uh, <laughs> Ola, you'll be yeah, yeah. you'll probably be joining shortly. And I'll be probably joining okay. you shortly as well. So conversation, please. Yes, Mr. 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 Yes. yes. Where are we? Yes. 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 We want to, what have you got to contribute to Jockley with her spectacular performance uh, this night? Uh, yes, I think I made, I made a comment earlier on. Uh, yes. At least uh, uh, confirming the courage, the resilience, the uh, determination that uh, she put up tonight. Uh, I mean, mm. yesterday I was so I was so pessimistic whether I should be coming or not, being so scared. <laughs> but surprisingly <laughs> tonight, she put up yeah. a strong fight tonight that it's beyond my expectations. Honestly, she was asking those questions, yeah. putting them across. Even yeah. all those guys yeah. that are good in the trade, in Biafra struggle, he was confronting them yeah. and putting across them with confidence. 
Yeah. Very proud of you. Just look. Well done. You Thank broke you. the hashtag. <laughs> hello, hello, uh, hello, hello, Mr. Quaiki. Mr. Quaiki. Thank yeah. you, sir. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Carry on, Mr. Quaiki. So you broke the heart to mind. Just let it go on like that. Honestly, there is no magic in it. You have conquered it tonight. You have conquered everything tonight, and please let it go with that, like that. This is how you, you make yourself a star. Honestly, <laughs> let it go on like that. I'm very impressed. Thank you. Very, very impressed. Yeah. I am I'm, very, I'm very really, I'm, 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 I'm exceedingly proud, Justin, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm really, really proud. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well done, well done, yeah. well done. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mr. Quakey, Mr. Quakey, hi. Yeah, Mr. Quakey, is Mr. Quakey speaker on? No. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Guribido, maybe you want to carry on, and then um, maybe you, because I have been, I have been doing the talking. You see, you see, oh. you see, let like, you know something, uh, Justin. You see, Mr. Guribido, that you are saying there. You are now beginning to see because yesterday we were Mr. Ogunibido, myself, and um, Mr. Thomas. We were together on the phone. What what time did you what, what time did we say goodbye to ourselves? I think up till about three. Yeah, yeah, I and think so. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and um, we were together whilst other people are sleeping. You see, sometimes because Mr. Ogunibido and I we worked together. You see, on this publication. This same publication here, the Weekend Express. This man, this man, will edit, will edit this that publication into. Sometimes he won't leave my place until four, five in the morning to go to his wife. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So these were part, these were part of the sacrifices that we made, and we been with ourselves. Is a mature pedigree. He's someone. He's definitely someone I can rely on anytime. Yeah. When it comes to thank you. Thank you very much. much. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Yeah, Mister. Mister Koiki, are you with us? Yes. Good evening. I hope you can hear yes, me. Good evening, Mister Koiki. Hi, good evening. Good evening. How are you, Justin? Yes. Um, I was. <laughs> I was, I was following the discussion earlier on, and uh, it was quite very hot inside the, you know, inside the room. Uh, and one thing that um, a lot of people might not understand is um, I came across a video uh, on um, uh, Chief Dele Momodo page, and why would they were protesting in front of the Nigerian High Commission, and I I looked at yeah. that video. And I think if I'm right, I'm not sure what date or what year, but I'm thinking maybe if 94 or either 95. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. That about. yeah, go I'm, on. I'll probably see maybe about 94, 95. And that means I'll probably just live in secondary school. And the question <laughs> I, I, I asked on that video was, um, are we now free? Even since those days of that same you know, struggle, this is another kind of struggle that has now come to the light whether uh you know as at that time uh is a kind of different struggle but the question we need to also ask ourselves is when i look at that video and i look at another generation making another kind of heat up conversation we've seen a lot of um struggle in that same embassy that i never knew what that embassy looked like because there was no kind of transmission to bring that broadcast to us as at that time when that video was shot. I'm seeing that video for the first time. And that video has a lot of meaning if only those of us that really wants to understand that the struggle that some individuals, either from the, you know, from the Biafra, the Odudua, or just ordinary, uh, you know, people across the world. But what the technology has been able to do is to bring it quicker to our doorstep so that video which uh you know people were and um I, I now look at it compare that and i think that's that video there thank you very much um heritage tv yes, yes, uh, and yes, yes. I, I, I would I, I want us to get the sound out as well while i'm mute, I'm mute.
Well, it means that Nigeria is going to be subjected to another three years or more of a rule of tyranny, of a rule of evil. We must not allow that to happen. My father has a mandate of the Nigerian people to decide our future. He's in Abuja. He must be consulted. Dialogue must commence immediately so we can find a quicker route out of this problem. What Nigeria cannot afford. And looking at that video, um, I'll go back to you in the studio, but I just want to land on it because when I saw that video, the, there was quite a lot of thought that was coming to my to my to my mind and part of that was as at that time a generation were protesting for a purpose and for a cause so we now have another generation that have the best of the technology in their hands and at the press of a button that technology can move from Russia to, to Yugoslavia, to Cyprus, to any part of the country. And that is why I have said it in so many forums that the only CCTV we still have in Nigeria that is 24 hours is the smart mobile phone in the hands of everyone. And I will yeah. go back to you in the studio. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Thank you, um, Mr. Koiki. Um, I think uh, I remember that particular thing that. Um, you are talking about that was uh, mko abiola's daughter i remember that and this was the days of um alaji alaji when alaji alaji was um, our high commissioner uh, to the court mm -hmm. of uh, and at the same time some of the people i i know them very well the the alaji the alaji Dan, Zumi, the mrs Ntiedo atm uh George. This was their time at that time. And you can, you can, now, next, Mr. Bulebido, you remember that, that clip as well? Oh, the, definitely, I do remember, yes. Yes. I remember. Mr. Bulebido, yeah, Mr. Bulebido here, uh, I think the very day uh, uh, I asked Mr. Bulebido to supply me with uh, some fantastic piece on the atrocities inside Number number nine, Notumbaland Avenue, and the description of the flag outside the embassy by Mr. Gulibido. My Kolade was the high commissioner at the time. Mr. Gulibido, I think I remember described your national flag, the green, white, green. Described that as physically sick and disabled and unable to fly. <laughs> I mean, it, was a, it was a rag. It was hanging there, but mm -hmm. torn, completely torn and dirty. It wasn't flying. Yes. So I just then I picked yes. uh, my. I just picked uh, an idea from there that well, even this flag itself is more or less like the representation of our, what Nigeria is today. Completely torn, mm. not flying there yeah. as, as still as, as a as a dead body. So I just I just I just uh, try and. Uh, made a descriptive sort of a uh, condition that uh, the flag was it was torn and they so that I, I, I got that and i said oh my god a whole nation that is the giant of africa how can it have a flag yeah. just uh, on, on the top and yet that that uh, flag is so dirty they are completely torn out and then uh, nobody is taking consideration that this is selling us to the entire world as a country that doesn't even care for its own flag and that was uh, where I that uh, description. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think before we before we go to, uh, I think, uh, Mister Koiki, you've got some some um, some uh, figures for us from uh, Abuja today. But before we come to you, uh, we come to you, uh, Mister Koiki. Let me quickly remember. Let me quickly remind some of our viewers around the world about the GoFundMe that. Um, we are raising um on heritage tv uh if you know you can part away with whatever any amount that you feel your pocket is um uh, can handle it's not by fault but you have to think of your family you have to think of your loved ones 
But the good company will go towards them um, and packaging all the information that um, we are disseminating on Heritage TV to all the nooks and crannies of Nigeria to the Biafran and uh, some of the packages that gone on tonight between uh, um, Justin Noah, Simon Epa and uh, Uche this night uh, and it will be broken down into components and then send on people's WhatsApp the moment it is on their WhatsApp or on onto uh, a, a radio that they want to come up with, they can listen to this information offline. So the goal for me is there to help those people uh, listen to the agitation. It's all about agitation and how we can mobilize our people in both the Afro Republic and in Udubua Republic. Because Information is key, and it will be channeled in such a way that the Igbo people in the Afra, the Kodubua people in uh, the Southwest, can listen to their own language. Perhaps in the next um, in the next show, uh, perhaps uh, we will find we will get a lot of Igbo people speaking their own language, uh, and just just the Nora will equally direct and coordinate the whole activities to bring in the people encourage them to speak in the language so that when all these talk get into the Afra and the Odubua Republic, they can hear the language, not English. So now I'm going to go back to um, uh, Mr. Olayo Bukwiti for the latest information on COVID-19 from Nigeria. Over to you, um, Mr. Kwiti. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Frank, and uh, thank you to our other panelists there. Um, first and foremost, um, we, we are not doing, uh, I mean, the, that same question was asked uh, during my report to the studio on the radio this morning. Uh, the question was asked, how many tests have we done in Nigeria in total? Uh, we in a population of 200 million where the coronavirus is ravaging through every part of the country apart from maybe two states at the moment out of the 36 six that we have and i said uh, we we've not done much we've done less than 25000 tests across board uh you know to uh every part of the country and there could be so many reasons for that but um if we compare that to what ghana have done it shows that we are still lagging behind and as long as we are not doing enough testing we will not be able to trace and you know quickly put so many measures in place the number coming out tonight is also a very very big number in terms of the figure on a daily basis this is i think i'm seeing one of the very high number from the days i've been following uh, you know uh, uh, from the first index case if we want to put it that way tonight we now have another 381 new cases of coronavirus compared to what we had in the last uh, you know six weeks or five weeks since we've got the first index case from italy again i repeat 381 new confirmed cases and i will give us the breakdown then i'll give us the total number uh, lagos mm -hmm. has got 181 out of that 381 kano i've got 55 jigawa state i've got 44 Zamfara State, I've got 19. Bauchi, I've got 19. Castina, I've got 11. Bono, I've got 9. Kwara State, I've got 8. Kaduna, I've got 7. Gombe State, I've got 6. Ogun State, I've got 5. Shokoto, I've got 5. Oyo State, I've got 3. River State, I've got 3. Niger State, I've got 2. Aqua Ibom, I've got 1. Enugun State, I've got 1. Plateau State, I've got 1. In total, in total, we now have 3,526 confirmed cases of coronavirus currently in Nigeria. We have 601 that have been discharged and 107 people have died. I repeat that again, 3,526 confirmed cases, 601 have been discharged, 107 have, been, have died. Before I go back to you in the studio, I also quickly have to put this uh, into, uh, for those that are watching us, as we speak right now, I got in touch with our correspondent in Ibadan. Two 
individuals yeah. index case we might want to call them index case have run away from the isolation yeah. center they are still looking for them they don't know where they are at the moment uh, and the government is saying that if anyone find them please report them no name no picture has been put out of these two people that means they've gone hiding in the community and people are worried one of the other states as well have also have a lot of cases of people being buried uh, from the news coming out as well from Abuja, uh, from uh, from Nigeria today. Uh, if care is not taken, uh, we might see more of the explosion in the next couple of weeks to come with the cases of coronavirus in Nigeria. Heritage TV, I'll go back to you now in the studio. Um, yeah. Sorry, one uh, moment. Yeah. Mr. Frank, um, if you don't mind, can I just excuse myself? Quickly, because I, at least I need to catch some sleep. It's almost uh, three a.m. Yes, 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 um, yes. Um, Justin, uh, we will discharge you, and then we will carry on. Thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, thank tonight, you, sir. You've done very well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. All right. Quick, yes. Good back. Yes. Good back. Mr. Quincy, let me come back to you. Yeah. Now. I I was heard by someone earlier on today to say to me that the number of cases that the NCDC are talking out with this COVID-19 are all fraudulent. And that the, the real cases are not recorded. Now, Somebody told me and then actually sent me a burial ground up in the north where there is a mass burial taking place. And according to the information, they claim that the government aligned to the people and that well over one million people had already been buried in a mass grave in Canada. How how far is this true? Well, uh, you're quite right. Uh, I mean, um, the I think that's uh, Jigawa State. I'm just going to pull that up. Uh, that was uh, even shown on uh, on the uh, on uh, channels tonight of that burial ground with the Commissioner for Health of that particular state that you've just mentioned. Going back to Kano, uh, there's a lot a lot happening in Kano. Uh, uh, I was listening to the uh, Nigeria Medical uh, Association president uh, this evening on, on, on uh, politics today, saying that, uh, and I, I can now go back to your broadcast about a few days ago when you were giving us the total of uh, our medical staff. That now into correlate to what that individual said, the president of the Nigeria Medical Association tonight at, uh, you know, during the, uh, the conversation on politics today. Ten well, what he first said was, Kano doesn't have enough medical personnel. Ten medical doctors have died in Kano. There's another 20 or so that are also either been isolated, and I'm sure there are more that have died, but they're probably just giving us that figure. But in total, we have about 150 medical staff, you know, from what he's saying, that are currently being, uh, you know, isolated or have died. But going back to Kano, there's still this confusion coming out, you know, from what we heard from the presidential tax force to the presidential tax force giving us the daily briefing. On Sunday, the, the, the information coming out was those that have died in Kanu died of COVID-19. But the Minister for Health is still coming back to say there is not clarity on what is killing people in Kanu. And it looks like Kano is hiding something, you know, from the world. And if they are hiding something from the world, what would then happen is we've seen the transmission coming out, especially with the Alimajiris and people coming out of Kano. Uh, in somewhere in the east, we saw Dangote truck that had cement movement, but also had movement of people inside. I think that was in Abia State, also had movement of people. So what is happening now is. People in Kano are also trying to run away out of Kano if they can find their way out. But there's now what we call 
a lot of community spread, not just in Kano, is now moving to other states across the northern part of the country. Mm. Mr. Ogudido. <coughs> yes. Yeah, Mr. 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 I'm listening. Yeah. Kano State is hiding something from the world and people are running away from that state. We've seen pictures of Almanjiri children running away from the state in trucks and in trailers to the south. What is happening? Well, I think uh, we should not be surprised because uh, we know how Nigeria has been running for a very long time. And we know that the underlying word here, most of the time as it relates to Kano State, is money. We know that uh, Gandhi J, the governor, is always passionate about raking in more money from wherever source that money will come from. So, the well, that is just uh, their problem in Kano State. If they can't give us official figure as it's happening, and since we have to rely on the on whatever the government tells us, well, uh, it goes to show that uh, we are being vindicated about the type of uh, fake country that we say we are running as a country. It's really unfortunate that now, we are like let me, this. Let me, let me, let me, Mr. Gulibido, let me quickly take you yes. through the number that um, Mr. Yomiko came up with. Uh, yeah. Kano, Kano with 55 recorded cases. New cases, yeah. New cases. But then yeah. and again, we've got a situation whereby the people are dying like no man's business. Is there any falsification to the figures and what is really happening in the northern re northern state in Nigeria. I th we are not being given the real fact about uh, what's happening in northern Nigeria. You remember uh, what happened last week when uh, we had uh, them telling us that they were going to be moving away all the Almagiris from the north. These Almagiris are not being moved away in a one by one uh, sort of uh, mode of uh, transportation. They are being brought together as as a group. And we know that when they imagine when they move, you know they move they, they move in tens, twenties, and the thirties, and the and when we, are, when we are talking about them being taken away from Kano State, it means that they are going to be bundled in maybe one big trailer and they're going to be, to be together. So even considering that alone, we can see that we are just being manipulated. Nothing that is being said to us that is truthful about uh, the true nature of what's happening in Kano. Definitely, we are just mm -hmm. being we are just being tricked that we are being deceived. The danger that we're having now is yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, the, the greatest danger we are facing now is those that, that are being moved from Kano. Where are they moving to? And then what yeah. effort are the southern the southern uh, governors making towards securing their own state? Are there mm. uh, logistics in place whereby these people on arrival are going to be quarantined? Or is there any means of them being sent back to where they are coming from? So it goes to show that we are facing the greatest danger in Nigeria, especially in the southern part of Nigeria. Because if this is not handled with care, honestly, in a few weeks' time, I just pray that we don't have serious figure as regards the issue of the death from uh, COVID-19. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, I was listening to uh, the WHO director saying that um, Africa might be having about almost close to 200,000 deaths if care is not taken. And that is quite alarming. And, uh, you know, Nigeria might take a big chunk of that looking at the situation where we are now. Kano at the moment is 482. I'm not sure why they are not adding the remaining numbers of people that have died. Again, this is where uh, we will continue to say that um, where, when statistics is not played out, we saw the situation, uh, which we're still going to discuss as well uh, during the before we end this program tonight, because it's important that we put that on record that the, the black people in UK are four times dying 
than their white colleagues yeah. in the early church. Mm. We will talk about that. But as I go back into uh, the Twitter, I've just picked up another information. 40 Lagos bound travelers from Kano intercepted in Niger State. At least 40 travelers en route Lagos State from Kano have been intercepted in Niger State. And it seems now that um, apart from people move, we do know that they move. We've seen some of the time that they've moved in different trucks. But their movement now is at risk in the sense that they have not been tested in Kano. They are moving with a virus in their body. And when they get into, if they manage to, which some of them have been able to, because uh, we know we have what we call a porous border. And that means even if the main border, I mean, people are still moving anyway. We saw, uh, I saw um, uh, that in Abuja, someone from, someone from Benoit State that was able to move. So my question is, if we continue to see these individuals manage to get to another state, fizzle into the community, then it's going to be a kind of bombshell. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Um, Mr. Ogunibido. Yep. Is there any likelihood that the movement by those Alemanjiris in the north down south could they have been infected so that they can come down south to infect somebody? Well, uh, there is every likelihood that many of those being sent might have been sent as <laughs> as instrument of a uh, war towards the south. Because we have always, always been anticipating what is coming down to south. Because we know that there are problems that are coming which people are not being sensitive to. The point now is, considering what is happening now in the north, they might be seeing that as a means of usage, as a weapon, just to make sure that they have their way, the way they'll be planning, Ruga failed, and they all left us to make sure that the south is subjugated, has been put in place. We have all those, I'm uh, they be moved down south, uh, empowered with a uh, bike to go and ride Okada, make money. Then why many of them, even currently, under their bed, they're having AK-47, so that uh, when the issue of their runover of the south will happen, uh, nobody will be able to handle it from the south. So we are really on tender hooks in the south, and in danger, if not handled now, we might all live to regret it. Someone asked yes. from the comments, uh, Odili, Odili says the place that they are going to, who will take care of them? Question mark. This is the point. Before they before they, before they arrive, the government mm. itself must be able to put logistics in place whereby they are going to be uh, ambushed and uh, get arrested, get quarantined, and make sure that they don't actually endanger the life of people across across the southern part of Nigeria. But we don't have enough mm. isolation center. We are running out of isolation beds. This is the danger that we are facing in the south. Because already the cases are being handled in the south. That's why the fact that the numbers are not, you know, alarming yet. But by the time these boys from uh, these uh, evangelists arrive south now, definitely we are going to lose control completely. We are going to lose control completely. And I, I can assure you. Right, uh, guys. Let me introduce uh, the uh, the boss there, uh, Mr. Ade Thomas. He's joined us um, in this conversation. You're welcome, um, uh, the boss. Thank now, you, Governor. Uh, yes, um, Mr. Thomas. Yes, sir. Ruga failed. Yeah. Land grabbing failed. Yeah. Could it be? another form of territory control by the north in the south okay one thing i would say point blank is that they can do the north can do whatever they like uh there's so many their tactics are completely failed by now because we have a way of dealing with our situations in the south and i will go through some few things with you uh no matter what they do, even if they come down south, there will still be less death in the south. Because 
there's more UV ray being pumped out to southwest Nigeria, uh, to southern Nigeria than northern Nigeria, than Nigeria. So in that case, we still have a better chance of surviving in southern Nigeria than in northern Nigeria. That is why, and in southern Nigeria, we're not as stupid. We won't go uh, to the cemetery and start uh, rumbling with the, with, the, with, the, with the casket of someone that died of a uh, virus. People in the south are, are more reasonable, much more reasonable than that. Yeah, they're more self-conscious. They're more conscious mm. than that. I don't believe they're going to risk their life for no reason to do stupid things like the people in the north are doing, sir. Mm. Right. Um, yes, um, uh, Mr. Ogunibido. Yeah. Now, now that now that uh, we are faced with um, falsified figures from the NCDC in Nigeria, what do you think, or how do you think Nigerians can help themselves? In this terrible mess, because NCDC are not—they're not pretty straightforward. There was a clip of a a Nigerian woman who left England and was wrongly diagnosed by the NCDC just to make money. Is coronavirus all about money making by the politicians in Nigeria? Uh, Mr. Abelou, let me come uh, out for you that uh, I've never ever taken Nigeria seriously as a country because I do not think it works in that country. And at the same time, in recent years, we have known that everything that happens is only on the paper. When it comes to the physical evidence to show where those things are actually happening in real sense, you don't see the evidence that they are happening. So all these people have been put together, all these people have been put, I can assure you, it's only a table activity. They just sit down there, put one on the paper, and just have to figure out the reality of what, of what is happening in Nigeria is not being brought to the doorstep of people. All I can say it, I mean, all I, all I can say is, please let everybody be very wary of this danger that is coming. Be self-protecting. Everybody listening to this, have that consciousness that nobody is immune to COVID-19. Your personal hygiene matters. Your security mm. and safety matters. Right now, stay home and make sure that during this period of time, all the tension of people moving across from north, uh, north to south, all the problems that is associated with it, people now lobbying themselves together in front of the bank, all this should be avoided. Because you don't really understand the next person you are going to meet, whatever that person is carrying, whether it's healthy, whether it's having the element of the of the virus. So you can't really say. The only thing you, you can do is be very, very careful and make sure that you arm yourself well. Be face masked and make sure that you carry your sanitizer along. So frequently try and rub your hands and always sniff the sanitizer if you can. Just to make sure that if there's any any element of this virus in you, they are going to be decontaminated. That is all you can do with that because the government doesn't care. All they are after is money. And all this is happening because Nigeria is fake. Nobody cares about Nigeria. Nigeria is only a looting ground for the big power using their agents. So nobody cares. That is why nobody has been able to think about good hospital. Nobody is thinking about roads. No, even as I'm talking to you, Frank. That's why the fact that it, the entire world is shut down now and no economic activities happening or, or taking place. Can you believe that as I'm talking to you tonight, Naira, uh, Naira and the uh, dollar and pounds, can you believe that the Nigerian Naira is falling against those, those, those currencies? So you can see that not mm. it, it, it is only an avenue for the people to make money. They are using their agents to make money and they are empowering few people so that they can use those who to manipulate their people so this, this is how nigeria has run since 1960. that country is fake nothing is working nothing is happening there it's only an avenue for the people to make money nigeria was put together as a, as a looting grant that is the fact that the fact 
So it's the high time we just came to our senses and realized that we just have to move on to go and build a true nation that we are all dreaming of. Nothing mm. works in Nigeria. Nothing works. Mm. It's okay. fake. Uh, right. Uh, Mr. Mr. Koiki, Mr. Koiki, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm coming straight to you because Mr. Oguri Mido said uh, it's all about making money. Is COVID 19 pandemic all about money making by the Nigerian government? The, the first question is um, whether the transparency of how we've heard about the figure in, in large quantity. Uh, and we keep getting information that um, all that will be available for us to see. Uh, I was watching the presidential tax force again today, telling us uh, the donation coming from Nesto uh, in uh, in terms of food palation and also uh, you know whatever they were delivering to to support the you know the government. We've seen that um, some state. You know, the first state that was given a kind of a, you know, in, in billion of Naira was Lagos State. And when that money went to Lagos State, uh, by announced by the president, as at the time that the money went to Lagos, uh, we saw that, uh, you know, other states were also now wondering why they went, you know, that kind of money were not coming to them. But Lagos was the, you know, was the boiling point. But now, what is happening, the question you ask is, uh, is it a money-making opportunity? Um, first and foremost, I'll go back to the PDP statement that the $311 million that was returned back to Nigeria, we must keep an eye on that so that that money doesn't fizzle away. Uh, the money itself <laughs> was uh, according to the information that uh, the, 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 the agreement in 2014, the money was meant to go towards the real project from Kano, Lagos, and I also heard from the presidency, the Mambila project, which has been uh, one other area that uh, we, we've been talking about and is not coming true. So the question on the lips of a lot of Nigerian is, is there coronavirus? Yes, there is coronavirus. We know that there's coronavirus. Are they putting in enough effort to make it, uh, to ground it, to stop it as quickly as possible? Uh, that is not something that is working to the extent in the sense that we've only been able to test less than 25,000 people across the whole of the country. That is quite scary. And it's a lot of Nigerians, um, I spoke to one of our representatives in the Bado today, I just told you, in an isolation center, how come two people run away as we speak right now, they're nowhere to be found. What has gone wrong? So, and you now, ask question in the sense that are we really fighting coronavirus that is the same virus that is killing so many people outside other country or are we also using this to have seen donations of vehicles what would happen even after coronavirus what has been happening to some of the donation of you know you know things like that it end up fizzling away and we end up trying to get more uh, what would happen is as long as Nigerians still see a country where everyone believes that the money that is meant for this purpose is not getting to their main pocket, and uh, from the, like I said, the $311 million, we saw another $3.4 billion that was taken out from the IMF. These are huge amounts of money, but yet, an average Nigeria, as we speak right now, that I spoke to in Ibadan with no light, said to me, they've not received any palliative. There's a lot of vulnerable people right in where it was. And that means Nigeria will continue to wonder those big sum of money, where are those money? And that means it's just an opportunity for another jamboree. And as we all know, election is around the corner. Whether that will come true or not is another topic. But we do know what the politicians do. They snatch up the money for what they are not even thinking of whether they will survive the COVID nineteen. Hmm. Hmm. All right, um, I think um, I'm going to go straight to um, uh, the boss there, uh, Mr. Thomas. I think some people are actually asking for the number. Please, is there a WhatsApp number to call in? Maybe that number can actually 
go in okay. right I'll pin the now. number now so that people can actually call in yeah yeah so that um, people can actually call in if you want to call in uh, the number is coming up on your screen and that number will go straight into the studio if you want to oh can, you do, it? can you do it at your hand mm -hmm. can you do the call at your hand okay i think the number is uh, let me get the number out um i'll just get that number out just wait a minute just one moment one minute i'll get it out from here okay all right that's it plus four four plus four four seven three four one seven three four one two three four five six four okay that is the whatsapp number to call uh uh glass gladstone osai that is the number to call if you want to ring in to make your contribution to the show the number is there for you now um mr ogunibido there was um, this case that came into my possession earlier on today and this was um, a pharmaceutical company up in nigeria who said i'll I'll, I'll give you the name of the pharmaceutical company the name of the pharmaceutical company is a company called um let me see is a company called let me try and find yes iris medical foundation iris medical foundation drugs in nigeria is the name of this medical company and the the managing director of the company is Dr. Paul Olisa Ojei. Dr. Paul Olisa Ojei. Now, on the 3rd of March, 2020, Mr. Ojei got a call from the Minister of Information, Alaji Lai Mohammed. According to him, the call lasted only five minutes. Now, Lai Mohammed told that the Mr. OJ, Dr. OJ, told the minister the truth about COVID 19 because you know all your ministers in nigeria perhaps just to buttress to say oh they were making contacts with pharmaceutical companies in nigeria and dr oj asked the minister of information a very genuine question question if the government really wants to put an end to covid 19 that coronavirus is not life-threatening and that it is treatable it is only a viral infection and that nigerians should not lose sleep over it to cut the long story short there is dr oj claimed that they've treated similar cases of coronavirus with one of their medication called venedi elixir elixir and that that particular medication was used in treating ebola the doctor offered himself up as a guinea pig that they should infect him with coronavirus and that within 72 hours he will take the same medication 
the Benedi Elaxia that was manufactured by his company, Irene Medical Drugs Foundation, and that within 72 hours, he would be well. Your Minister of Information refused the gesture. What is happening, Mr. Ogunibido? Where by something is before? Yes, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I had you. I had you clearly. I think what is happening yeah. is that uh, what we are witnessing in that scenario, whereby a situation that is happening is being exploited for money making, and those who are really not know what they are doing, nothing has ever been taken seriously in Nigeria. The welfare, the safety, the security of the people have never taken precedence in their mind. So all they are after is just making money through all sorts of means. If we have a medical practitioner, be it a pharmacist or a medical doctor coming out with a, a solution to coronavirus, I think the first thing they, they should be doing is putting this across to the world at least to allow Nigeria to take that glory that we have discovered the cure for coronavirus. For, for coronavirus. But you can now see that all we are just seeing is sheer hypocrisy of the government. They are trying to appeal to the entire world that COVID-19 is ravaging Nigeria, uh, Nigerians and is ravaging in Nigeria. And they're trying to attract, you know, each fund that are going to be disbursed by all these... Uh, big uh, world organization that wants to help other nations this is just their uh, this I, I think this is just their goal not necessarily the welfare or the security of the current of the people that is actually taking their president at, at this moment so we have seen that nigeria has never been is, mm -hmm. we, our government they've never taken us seriously as a people and they've always been putting us as guinea pig you know they don't care about whether we are surviving or whether or not we are we, we are not surviving we hear of these billions being donated by different companies, by banks, by Dangote, by, but what has been happening to the money that are being collected? Where are they spending the money specifically? The palliative they claim to be given, where is the data of where those palliatives... So, we are dealing with the most corrupt, the most fake, the most fraudulent, the most scamming government that we has ever existed in nigeria nothing nothing can be taken seriously about this government the government is just they're just riding on the on, on the people they don't really care so that guy should be consoled let his conscience console him he tried his best to make sure that he's helping the government but the government that he wants to help are they ready to listen to him so that is the plight of every nigerian walking on the street today it's not peculiar to the pharmacist alone but the entire nation is being ignored. Mm -hmm. Why those who are ruling us, they are just taking uh, us for a ride. So may God continue to help the people of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mugunibido. Now, and I'm coming to you, um, uh, Mr. Thomas. I'm coming back to you before going to uh, Mr. Kweki. Former President Obasanjo said coronavirus is not yet in Nigeria and that what they are treating is just malaria fever. <laughs> Multi-billionaires, multi billionaires they've donated and given money to the federal government of Nigeria running to billions. In billions. Hmm. In, billions. in billions, not millions. Billions. Now, we've now found ourselves in a situation, or we find ourselves in a situation whereby Madagascar came up with COCOD, a mixture of their own solution to combat COVID-19, herbally. We've got a, pharmac a pharmacist in Nigeria who's hard and has been using 
these are medication to treat Ebola and that Ebola is even far more stronger in terms of viral infection than COVID-19. Yeah. But the Nigerian government would rather spend and they want to spend billions of naira to import the alternative from Madagascar into Nigeria. What exactly is wrong with Nigeria? Okay. Uh, I would first like to say a very thank you for your question. I'm going to break it down very well for you, our people so that our people can actually understand it more and more and then they can know where we're coming from and where we're going to. First of all, a lot of people promise so much money. Can I tell you one thing? We're Nigerians. In Nigerian situation, people will promise money and the money might never forthcome. I don't know if you know that. Mm. And yeah, I know. the government might not have received some of this money that was promised, but they're still hoping to get it. Until one day when something happens, something goes wrong, that is when you know that this money didn't forthcome. Was not never received. That's number one. Mm. If there's no coronavirus in Nigeria, what killer back are you? Could it be old age? Remember in America, some people, some hospitals were being paid 13,000 pounds for admitting somebody under coronavirus. So they were actually uh, admitting people that are not coronavirus and they were telling them that they admit their other coronavirus in America. And anybody they put on ventilator in America, in the States in America, if they put anyone on, on a ventilator, the government pay them $39,000 for going on ventilator. So they were actually putting people who were not on ventilator <laughs> on ventilator. <laughs> right? And this is not hearsay. This is why Trump is pissed off. This is why Trump is angry. Because you look at mm. everything and said, why on earth are you guys trying to frustrate me? And the paper will lie about everything. They lie about the figure. They lie about statistics. They lie about... And in this same America, they were falsifying uh, death numbers. How many people died? Because I understand in, Amer in America, there are some people who are going to get prosecuted for adding about 20,000 more people to their death list because they get more money from the government. So does it mean what we're practicing in Nigeria, America wants to start doing it? Or because they say we have too many Nigerians in America, maybe we've gone there to infect them with our deception. I thank God that we live in Nigeria. And when we leave, we're going to leave that deception back to them. I believe there's no virus in Nigeria. And uh, if there's no coronavirus, is there another disease in Kano? That's killing people unnecessarily. If there's no kind of coronavirus in Kano, because there must be something. Coronavirus or any virus or any disease, or maybe Ebola have just suddenly resurrected in uh, Kano. <laughs> yes, some people were using it for fraud. Yes, we know we know what our people like. Uh, I said it sometimes. In a discussion program like this, around 1992, there is a chap, a Nigerian chap, that has 16 cancel flat houses in North Pekami State. Wow. He wanted to, want to tell himself to go out to the, book, the biggest landlord in, in Nigeria. So this man was probably be the biggest cancel flat owner in North Pekami State, 16. And it was How did he money? Because, you know, in those days, you know, before, when you wanted to get cancel flat, they don't ask you to go and bring your grandfather before they give you cancel flat. If you apply for cancel flat, within some few weeks, they give it to you. You understand? <laughs> if you come today and say you don't have somewhere to sleep today, they put you in a hotel uh, today, tomorrow they ask you to come back. They arrange bed and breakfast for you. Within a month, two months, when they cancel flat. <laughs> 
Some few years ago, right? <laughs> you have a caller. Some few years ago, do you know they pay you two hundred and fifty pounds to take a flat in uh, Thamesmead because nobody wants to live in Thamesmead. Some few years ago, they pay you money to take up a flat in uh, Canning Town because nobody wants to live there. Yeah. Some few years ago, Canning Town was outside London. Some few years ago, Abbey Wood was outside London. Yeah. Abbey Wood became popular even back in them. was outside London some few years ago. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You understand? So nobody wants to go and live there. Because number one, if you live, if you live in Beckenham or, or those areas, it's out as it used to be two zones. Uh inner mm. zone and outer zone. Anything outer after zone. Canning Town is outer zone. Who wants to go and live in outer zone? Mr. Koiki, let me quickly come yes. back to you. Um the chairman said money might have not come from the billionaires who promised heaven and earth and somebody is now asking us how many ventilators have they got how many ventilators do we have in nigeria have we got any idea on the number of ventilators and is there any indication that the donors, the Dangotes, the Femi Hotel Dollars, the Mike Adenogans, is there any record that they've actually honored their agreement? Uh, when it comes to the donation of the uh, fund to Nigeria, um, from what I heard at the beginning is that money has not come true. Whether that has changed in the last couple of days is a different thing entirely. Uh, I didn't um, get cash. Uh, uh, Allah, you make what did you say? The money has a couple come of true. weeks back. The money has not come true from the, from the donor <laughs> according to the uh, presidential <laughs> tax force that they've not received it. But whether that has changed <laughs> is another thing entirely. But can, one can thing I, can is... Can I say something before Allah Yomi Kwe? Yes. Yomi, how many times yes. has people promised they donate money to you and up till today the money didn't forthcome? Well, uh, maybe these individuals are still thinking how the, uh, the money will get into, uh, you know, Nigeria, I mean, into the coffer or the bank account um, of the government. Um dangote donation we saw dangote with the cbn uh governor i uh, think in one of the isolation center that they were building and i could remember the cbn governor saying that um you know up to the last penny will be made available and known to nigerians how the money will be spent i'm looking at the um one of the print media at the moment says uh, Dangote Foundation donate 1.5 billion to Nigeria. Uh, uh, you, you keep getting all this big figure, but the reality is, what are we using? I mean, uh, I mean, if the money has been delivered or has been given out, as um, Nigerians might want to believe, then where is the money going to? Are we buying the equipment? Are we bringing in? um product medical equipment from outside the country uh because there's a, quite a lot of movement of um aircraft within the country even though we know that they've locked down the airspace for another four weeks uh according to the aviation minister yesterday yeah it's 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 um it's a shame that we have a system where people would donate but yet we are still discussing whether that donation has come true or not. We've seen that, um, and it takes me back to the veteran that we saw about 30 million pounds was donated, uh, you know, to support his cause of the 100th step. Um, it did. 
and it clocked 100 years, I think, uh, a couple of days ago, you will realize that um, all that money has already come true, either as one pound to those that donated up to thousands or in their millions, but we know that 30 million pounds has been donated. And if you want to know where that money is now, you will be able to find out where that money is and whether that money has been withdrawn and what they're buying. If the money has been donated, let's assume that the money has been donated. Again, as much as we are in a pandemic, we also have to be given statistics of how things are running. And that is the only way we can be able to see, you know, the direction. But if we are not giving the breakdown, then um, a lot of Nigerians will just keep saying, those money have not come true. Maybe the money have come true. Maybe there's a purchase of, you know, some of these uh, materials that they need, the equipment, uh, the logistics, uh, because yes, definitely, uh, the government have been able to say that they won't be able to do everything. That's why they need everyone to come in and support. And this support that is coming, that is not the government one, has to be accountable for. And because we've not been accounting for, you know, uh, for so many things, you know, in the past, I can only hope that we would have a clear, uh, you know, breakdown uh, of whatever was purchased. Uh, we don't want to see a situation like uh, Babache Lawal that uh, end up bringing back the same money that was meant to be used to cut the grass and uh, go back to his own private company, which is so many, you know, shady business that go behind the scene. We want to know who is purchasing what, where, how, location. Uh, we've seen even here in UK, the PPE that was delivered from Turkey is already been in the media saying that uh, you know it has not reached the standard and the quality of what uh, is meant to be delivered so even if people have been saying well they've donated the money we are buying the stuff are they buying the quality or they are just buying the quantity i'll go back to you in the studio yeah what about what about the issue of, of the ventilators in terms of the ventilator uh, i don't have the statistics of how money how many ventilator we have but what I can say is, uh, most states at the moment don't have enough capacity. And why do I say so? Um, yes, I, I saw the, the Nigerian Air Force, uh, I think some weeks back, were also bringing in extra gas to supply to, you know, mo uh, I mean, uh, Abuja and few places. Uh, we know that Donald Trump has promised us 200 but in terms of the total number, I don't have it off head, but I do know um, that we have not got to a stage at the moment. If we look at the figure of people that have died, it's only 103. Well, that's what they're telling us. And those that are managed to get to the hospital, because the purpose of the ventilator is to help your breathing, uh, you know, while they're giving you other, uh, you know, treatment. Yeah, I really do that drug, yeah. But if we are not seeing mm. cases at the moment, like uh, what we saw coming out of um, Italy, and uh, we, we didn't see much of that in terms of graphic in UK, they were able to protect you know, the dignity of the body in as much as uh, people might not understand that uh, UK is now over 30,600 and something cases of people that have died. So we are still in the early stage. And I heard the, you know, even what the, the Minister for Health saying, uh, they are worried that now that they've uh, they've allowed the Nigerians to go back on their daily feeding, because that's what I look at, it. people have been told to just go and sort out their daily feeding, uh, they are worried mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we might have a rebound, even though we are not even at the peak. So what we are seeing is still at a very slow pace, but in terms of the ventilator, I'm sure, you know, people will start, the awareness of that will kick in when we start seeing more people getting into the hospital, and they really need that ventilator. I think the people, I mean, we saw in Kano, people are playing and, you know, people are protesting in isolation. Those are not people that need ventilator at the moment. So, I mean, if people are in the isolation center, I think they are just the minor cases. But when we get to a stage where the real people that need the ventilator, then maybe the cry out loud will start coming out. Thank you. Thank you, Yumi. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Ogurebido, uh, this one is for you. Mr. 
quick. He said, we are not at the peak of the pandemic. Where are the Chinese doctors imported to Nigeria to help combat the spread of the virus? Mr. Gunebilo. Uh, well, I think you know the activities of the Chinese in Nigeria in recent years. Um, and we have uh, a big chunk of uh, Chinese community in Nigeria as well. So those guys can't be said to be coming to help Nigerians specifically, even though received by the government. So we actually need to understand something that um, China is not stupid and it knows what it is doing. The, the Chinese community in Nigeria might be the real target of the Chinese uh, doctors that came to Nigeria. Maybe to actually see to their welfare or it might be that the government, because of the initial panic that came across the world, maybe China just thought, well, in as much as Africa might be in danger, let's just see what we can do to go and help uh, uh, Nigeria. But what, I, what my instinct is telling me is that uh, those guys are coming, not specifically for Nigerians, come and kill them. I think they are coming specifically to come and make sure that wherever the chinese community are gathered in nigeria they want to just uh, make sure that uh, they take care of them that is the way i see it because when you look at the entire scenario the way it has been played people are rejecting them that they don't want them to come simply because because of the propaganda which is being uh, you know drummed around that uh covid 19 started from uh, from china but we often see most of the conventional media and we know what western press is like the agenda that they are made of when they want to fight a cause but no any western media has been lambasting china over covid 19 and we have seen so many things in the social media about the how this conspiracy is being put together but in as much as these are not being put across in the conventional media it will not be discussed and that that brings us back to the issue of the existence of covid 19 in nigeria and what has been killing the people so lots and lots of conspiracy around and lots of lots and lots of things that are being covered now, but maybe future we tell. We are still watching. They have been in Nigeria now for literally 24 days. And um question was uh, I'm just reading the um you know the sun uh, and this was um uh, the second of May. Uncertainty over the 15th Chinese medical expert mission after 24 days in Nigeria. Um, the question was put to the presidential tax force after uh, you know, the, their 14 days uh, uh, clearance of um, isolation. But as we speak right now, we're not getting any daily report of what they are doing. We've been told that they're not gonna have any engagement, uh, you know, any of the isolation center or any treatment. But they'll be working behind the scene but what really are they doing is is one thing that i believe that we the nigerians need to really know because there's a lot of you know worried from nigerians at home and nigerians outside you know i mean there might be 15 but uh, we've seen that one man can really create havoc not to talk about 15 people in a country and we don't know what and what they are actually doing and the role that they are playing which nigeria need to know uh you know uh, 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 at any given time yeah. so these are part of the issues that when it comes to communication i think um there's 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 something behind why they are in nigeria i mean the nigeria medical association were not really pleased you know for the arrival of these 15 delegates from nigeria from china there was discrepancy in the communicate that was uh, given to us because they came in according to them that uh, you know the government said um, they were coming as part of their corporate social responsibility the Chinese ambassador said that they were here because the government invited them so and I remember when he was interviewed at that uh, airport terminal that they're not only just gonna, gonna be in Nigeria like uh, I think uh, Mr. Gurubido was saying they're also gonna be supporting you know some of their citizens that lives in Nigeria yeah thank you very very much uh, mr mr 
Mr. Koiki. Now, uh, guys, thank you all. I think we will now bring our program to an end. It's been a cracky session uh, this evening or this night, stroke this night, with Jocelyn Noah on the Biafran agitation presented. She presented a very wonderful uh, case for the Biafran argument. Fantastic. Hello, ma. Now, we have to bring <laughs> the entire program to an end. And um, I want to remind each and every one of you who are still awake this early hours of the morning to so please go to our GoFundMe page and then uh, in your own little way you can donate no matter how small it is to our campaign to sensitize people back in nigeria information is well those people both in biafran land and in Udutua republic they're not getting the right information that you and i have access to and education information is paramount is key and the information that you and i are chunking out here will go a long long way to bring awareness to those people now i want you to please do us a favor if you are online and i think i'm going to indulge either the boss to help me check i want you to please click the like button on heritage tv just to appreciate that you love the program if you are a first timer click the like button and we will appreciate if we can see you this is not your first time perhaps this is your first time but we'd like to see more of you because here on heritage tv we dissect issues we look into issues we uproot issues we dig deep into issues and this is where journalism at its best and broadcasting is at its best you've just witnessed one today the boss discovered a talent first time she's never done this before jocelyn noah congratulations you've broken the ice and i wish you success i wish you uh, good health so that you can forge ahead in this new discovery of yours so i'd like to seize the opportunity to thank each and every one of you who's been with us listening to us very patiently uh tomorrow we will be back and i think from what i gathered it will be everybody's platform tomorrow Igbo, Biafrans, Yorubans, Urubo, Ibibios, Ethic, wherever you are. Ududuans. Come. We have to talk about it. We have to talk about our agitation. We have to present our case. And guys, it's been a wonderful time. And I want to thank you. Uh, Mr. Ogunibido, thank you very much for, for keeping so late. Uh, Mr. Yomikoiki, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, You're Simon Epa. Thank you. Thank you, Uche, uh, for your earlier contribution. And uh, of course, I'm not going to forget the big boss, Mr. Ade Thomas, the CEO of Heritage TV. Thank you all. And I wish you. Uh, success and a sweet dreams and until tomorrow we'll do it again thank you Bye goodbye now.
Susan Jumoke Fajano Thomas, it is important for us to stay at home. It is important for people to stay at home. By staying at home, you will help control the spread of the virus. You will help control the virus from spreading to your friends, colleagues, and the community. It is important we come together at this time to work together to support each other is by doing this and by staying at home that we can fight this virus. Also, it is important to practice social distancing, which means you need to stay two meters away from other people at all times. Please, let's do it together. Hashtag stay at home. Thank you. Everybody in London, have you heard that Heritage Television has come up with something new? All your functions and celebrations can now be multi-camera, live stream, that was only reserved for the rich and famous. Having a function in London can be viewed clean and clear immediately from any part of the world. Trust Heritage TV to give you a better reach. Heritage Television also does photography that will make you the envy of all your friends and family. Heritage Television is the best. All your functions, like birthdays, funerals, weddings, church anniversaries, or harvest. Heritage Television is the master. We are in the heart of London with an ultra modern equipped studio. You can call us on 020 800 46100 or email us info at heritagetv.co.uk or mobile 0734 1234 560. Heritage Television will do you proud.